Hello, fellows. I uh, felt like doing another completely uncalled for, unasked for, uh, pointless video going over the Crown Zenith set just to amuse myself. Now, we already, like, know what's in Crown Zenith, so I'm not really going to talk about, like, playability of cards or anything like that, except for maybe, like, some of the new cards. But, you know, most of these cards are, have already existed. It's just that we're getting new arts of them, and that's really, really fun. So I would kind of want to comment on the art, I guess, because um, I think that's really fun. And that's really what this set is all about. Like, this is, a, this is an art set. Pokemon have been like, alright, you know, we, we know that people really like the art of Sword, of Sword and Shield. They got really, really ambitious with it, with those uh, crazy alternate arts. So, they want to go out with a bang, with one final flourish. Here it is, Crown Zenith. I love the, I, even the name of the set sounds really awesome. Crown Zenith. Like, they, they made the perfect title for this, uh, for the F Sword and Shield finale set. So, yeah. Um, and, he, and we're even going to talk about, like, the commons a little bit. Although, I mean, I'm not going to, like, talk too much about them. Because, I mean, how much am I really going to say about all of these? Still, just want to, like, look at each card individually. Um, there's an Oddish. It's pretty nice, honestly. I like, I like the art. Um, it kind of looks like it's just kind of in, like, a wheel. Like, it's just kind of in one circular thing. Uh, which is a little bit weird, but I don't know. It's not really that big of a deal. Uh, <laughs> there's a silly little gloom. <laughs> I love the... You know, Gloom usually has its eyes closed, so seeing it with open, googly eyes like that is actually a pretty interesting. It's actually kind of unique. So that's a cool little artistic uh, interpretation of Gloom. And there's a Bellossom, which at Poke Beach here says that this was the first. This is the first Bellossom card since X Y Ancient Origins. I had no idea that Bellossom. Uh, had completely eluded the game like this. That is very interesting. I honestly thought that they made it a point to print every Pokemon um, in each generation. Although I guess maybe not. I guess they can't. I mean, they, they totally can. I mean, there's. I mean, I know now there's a thousand Pokemon, but they make like a thousand brand new cards every year anyway. So they they totally can. I don't know. They just decide to skip some for some reason. I do know that some of the baby Pokemon haven't had cards since like Diamond and Pearl. <laughs> Which is hilarious. Uh, but yeah. Uh, nice little bell awesome. Honestly, not that great of an art, but, you know, cool that the card is there. Unfortunately, the card doesn't do anything. So, yeah. Kind of a shame. Alright, Tangela with a little raspberry. That's nice. I like the little... I like that they that the background... Like, this artist knew that they couldn't really do detailed backgrounds. So they just kind of, all, in a way, made it, like, pixelated in their own style. That's kind of cute. And then a Tangro, almost a, like a realistic looking Tangro. That's strange. Very interesting. Sometimes it is weird kind of looking at uh, like the difference in artwork between one stage and the other. Like, you know, you got a pretty simple, kind of cartoonish looking Tangela, and then boom, realistic Tangela. Whoa. It looks like it's in a real place. It looks like a, yeah, just a real thing. Kind of interesting to see that style, though, for Tangro, because Tangro is just such an odd looking Pokemon. So yeah, huh. Oh, that's a nice little Scyther right there. Love the style. I love the, the use of colors. And the, it, 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 the image looks like it has a texture to it. Kind of looked like it was uh, drawn on this particularly like thick old paper. Like brown paper. Very interesting. And I uh, see it cutting, cutting down some bamboo, sharpening its blades. Pretty cool. Nice little artwork there. There's a Sunkern. Um, not much to say about that one, honestly. And a Yanma. That is a very cool-looking Yanma. Uh, kind of. I mean, Yanma doesn't look cool, but this artist did what they could with it. And I uh, gave it a pretty detailed background, honestly. Like, you see it on this tree. This actually kind of dead-looking tree uh, with this uh, kind of plane in the background. I think it might actually be on a mountain. Because you can kind of see, like... Yeah, it looks like there's, like, a cliff over this water over there. Pretty interesting. Yan Mega. Whoa. Flying at supersonic speed. Uh, it's by Kiyotaka Oshiyama, who I really like. I think that's a really, really great artist. Uh, this one doesn't really show off their strengths too well, which I think um, like they, they, they specialize in these uh, very solid uh, vibrant colors with these thick black outlines. and uh, Just kind of having a lot of detail despite a fairly simple style. Uh, but still, pretty cool seeing the 
dynamic artwork like that. I always like I always like seeing the Pokemon in motion. You know, I always think that just makes it look cooler. Because, you know, we're, these, these are Pokemon cards. They're supposed to be fighting. Pokemon, they're tools for battle. <laughs> I say uh, in a very uh, threatening way. Here's a Cricketop. Walking on a log like that. Although, I'm going to be honest, I don't like this one. Like, it doesn't look... Like, it, it kind of looks like... I don't know, almost like the... the, the the background, I guess, for lack of a better word, the, the the log itself was kind of designed in a different way, like it was a almost like a CG log or so. It just doesn't really look like the Cricketot's actually walking on it. It just kind of looks like they drew the Cricketot and then put in the background later on. It doesn't look like the log is large enough to even hold the Cricketot, even though Cricketot's a very very small Pokemon. Um, so yeah. Uh, so, sorry, Shigenori. <laughs> uh, I'm just trying to, you know, hey, no disrespect to any of the artists. I'm sure they worked really, really hard. And, you know, it's, it's cool that they're getting featured in this very awesome set. Just just giving some criticism. That's it. No hard feelings. Uh, Cherubi. All right. Not much to say about that one. Carnivine. Um, got a Shibazo artwork who generally does a good job. And, yeah, I like, I like the uh, consistency of it, kind of like, like I've been saying for some images. I like that the art is on the Pokemon in the background, like it's consistent. Like it looks like it looks like the Pokemon really belongs there, like it's part of the overall environment that it's framed in. So that's a nice little art. It's kind of got like this uh, mischievous looking face, like it's kind of like going, <laughs> ooh, it just it just I don't know, stole this stick or something. I don't know what Carnivine really does. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it looks like it's up to to some mischief. Looks like it's up to some to, some um, non good doing. I'll move on to the next image. Leafeon. There's a Leafeon V. Now, I know it's not ever ideal or perfect, but out of all of the CG TCG artists that Pokemon has, Planeta is probably the best one. They're, I think they're, at, at the very least, the least offensive. Because here's the thing about this image that I, I like. It actually looks like Leafeon is somewhere. It looks like it's doing something. It's running on some grass. It just ran out of this forest, which is kind of nicely rendered. Um, the Leafeon itself maybe could have more detail, but I don't dislike it. This actually looks all right. It's probably better than the... Uh, the original Leafeon V that will pull up right here uh, whenever Google loads. Yeah, like, uh, actually, actually, you know what? I don't know. I don't actually know. That's not really what I wanted. I wanted to open the image. Oh, I'm not saw a very big image, but hmm. I actually kind of like, you know what? I was kind of uh, taking a dump on Gobon Graphics by uh, saying that Planeta was better, but I don't actually know. They've actually got a kind of colorful background in this. This actually, this card doesn't actually look as bad as I thought. I guess the, the, the Leafeon itself doesn't look very good, though. Planeta did a lot better by making the Leafeon stand out. Like, you can actually see its body, whereas this, it's almost like... Yeah, it's like the leaves are translucent for some reason. Like, I guess maybe that's what Leafeon is supposed to be. But I don't think the CG style really complemented it all that well. You know, it, it's really just the swirl that really messes this up. Like the big, C, the big uh, uh, Photoshop swirl right there, just really disfigures the entire image. They could have just gotten rid of that, or at least made it less visible, because it's like the most bright and obvious thing on the image, and not the Pokemon itself. Um, this one, the Photoshop light, isn't quite so distracting because it's actually behind Leafeon. So yeah, I think I might prefer this artwork anyway. It doesn't matter because there's a cool Leafeon V later on. Leafeon V-Star. Um, I don't like any of the V-Star artworks, at least not the, you know, the the main V-Star artworks. Like the alternate arts are, and stuff like that are fine, but yeah, it's just, like this is why people hate most like Gobon graphics Vs and stuff like that. It just looks like the, the Pokemon in the middle of nowhere. Like, it's just got some kind of colorful green space filter or something. Like, it's traveling through hyperspace. And then it's got the gre the gold V-Star aura, which I don't know why that's a thing. It's just whatever. Again, it's not a bad rendering of Leafeon. Planeta does a decent job of that. But, 
It's, you know, it's probably better than the, the Leafeon V-Star that we already have. Yeah. Yeah, I just don't like this. I don't like it. Boring pose. Um, just nothing really interesting there. This one's a little bit better, because I can just see Leafeon better. But not by much, so whatever. Alright. There's a Grubbin. Um, that's kind of whatever. Although, it's, it's drawn by Atko Nishida, uh, Nishida. Atko Nishida, who's, you know, a long-time artist and does great stuff, but not their best work there. Uh, Zarude. This is a kind of cool artwork. It looks like it's in some kind of a forest grotto. And it's kind of peeking out the entrance of it, like, yo. Yo, what do you want? What are you doing in my forest? Get out. Get the heck out of there or I'm going to beat you up. You don't want to mess with this Zarud. It's going to it's going to drag you off. Ooh, and then triple whip you. It's going to flip a bunch of coins at you. You don't want any of that. Leave that Zarud alone. Very uh, fierce artwork. I like that. Calyrex. There's a single prize Calyrex in this. And uh, I like it. Um, Calyrex is about as terrible as a Pokemon can possibly look, but <laughs> I actually, it, it, I, I kind of find it comical how they have this very, um, like, cool, natural look to it. Like, you've got the sun shining down on this beautiful grass in the middle of a snowy forest, as if the heaven itself is smiling down upon one of Arceus's children, Calyrex. I don't really know what Calyrex is supposed to be where it comes from or like what its legend is but i guess that's what uh, is happening here and that's cool even though the pokemon itself looks terrible not that nurikabe drew it terribly it's just a terrible design of a pokemon but they did their absolute best with it and i respect that it's a good artwork all right charizard yeah, this is just uh, exactly what I was saying with the Leafeon V, and like why a lot of V cards, ha ha ha, funny, uh, is so, are so bad, because it's just a Pokemon in some kind of generic battle pose in the middle of nowhere. Like, there's no background, it's just spraying fire around. The fire doesn't even look good. Like, it, like, it just looks like they took an airbrush, it just, just an airbrush tool in Photoshop and just went shh. Like, it, it, it's, it's bad. Like, this is actually bad. <laughs> I would not want to uh, play with this card at all if I ever were to play Charizard V slash VMAX slash VSTAR. So, uh, yeah. Sorry, Design Inc. I'm sure I'm sure someone worked hard on it, but, yeah, it's just, it's just not, not good. And then Charizard V Star. Like I said, with the V-Stars, they're just not good-looking cards in general. Um, maybe this is better... What, what was the original Charizard V-Star? I don't remember what it looked like. Um, it's just him roaring. Him, him going a little raw XD. Um, I actually hate this. Like, like it, it, I, I just think of it the big open mouth. I just think of it going, ah, just in a really silly way. So I guess I like this one better. It's got its, it's kind of like sticking its hand out at you, it's got to claw at you a little bit, but you know it's a V Star card, so or a normal art V Star card. So again, no background. The V Star, the gold V Star energy aura doesn't look good. Uh, the fire itself doesn't look good. I'm not all that attached to Charizard either. Just, just no. Stop making these cards. Well, they are going to stop like, making these cards, but stop having the CG artists do the, the power cards. I don't. I, I just don't get why Pokemon is in this state where it's like, they, they understand that it has amazing artwork that people really, really love, and then they're just like, alright, let's have the, the, the bad CG artists do the meta cards that everyone's going to play that are going to represent our game. I don't get why they do that. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, if anything, Gobon Graphics should be doing the, the Calyrex. The common Calyrex, not the freaking Charizard V-Star that everyone wants. Whatever. Radiant Charizard. Cool that Radiant Charizard got a real artwork um, in this set. Of course, it it's, you know, Charizard. It, it would have been nice if they gave 
you know, real artworks to all of the other Radiant Pokemon that didn't get real artworks. Like, it's just... Like, they made Radiant Pokemon and then gave Greninja the one and only, like, actual artwork. Everyone else got some kind of, like, colored background and then just, it, you know, like, like... Like, just look at Radiant Heatran. Like, like what is this? Like, what even is this? That's just... It's just, it's just bad. That's just really bad. Uh... I guess Sneasler also had a had a like a real artwork, even though I can't tell all that much. Uh, but I think Paulucha was another one that was just like, yeah, like just 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 why, like why did you take such a cool looking Pokemon and not even let it have a background? And they even brought back freaking Mazakazu Fukuda, who, who used to be one of the ghosts. It doesn't do a lot of art now, but they got this one, and it's just the Pokemon. Yeah, it's just. It's such a disappointment. But in any case, yeah, uh, Charizard, um, you know, it's, it's it's black Charizard, so it looks cool. And they gave, they, Koki Saito gave it a nice background because having it in this wintry background actually makes the, the black color on the Charizard pop out a lot more than it would have if it was just in really any other background. So yeah, um, nice little uh, choice of environment. Uh, great Koki Saito artwork. That's why they're one of the best. Hang on. I just never realized that... Huh. That's weird. I didn't notice this. Uh, at the very bottom... The, uh, the bottom left, for the Radiant, the the credits are written in... Or they have a black uh, stroke. Or, no. Sorry. They have a white stroke to them. That's weird. How many cards are like that? Is it just a Radiant thing? Never noticed. <laughs> anyway. Entei. Look at that artwork. That's pretty cool. They really, uh, they, they, they made sure to make the legendary cards have the best artwork, and that is nice. Um, I don't really know what exactly it's doing. I guess it's running? Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Um, but yeah, just re a lot of detail on this. It looks like it's running on top of a volcano, too. So, that's pretty cool. Nice little art there. Uh, Simisir V. I, I'm pretty sure this is a, this was just a practical joke because uh, there was that one poll from a while ago that had everyone rank um, every Pokemon in existence, and then Simisir was at the very bottom. Simisir was considered to be the very least popular Pokemon ever, so they were just like, let's make a, a, a special chase card of Simisir, and they did. Good job, everyone. And not only that, but it got a V star as well. Isn't that amazing? Let's move on. Larvesta! That is nice. It's hi hanging out in a little, uh, in a little fireplace. And it's got a sock on top of it, or maybe even a Christmas stocking. It's probably just a sock. But I like that. It, it look, I like environments that, you know, have some details like that that just make it, make them feel like real places. Like, someone didn't just think, oh, let's just stuff Larvesta in a fireplace for whatever reason. They're like, no, this is going to be like someone's Larvesta that's just kind of hanging out there because it's comfortable. So yeah, nice detail on the Larvesta itself. Nice little background as well. Pretty cool. Volcarona. Um, this one's alright. It's... Honestly, it's, it's kind of just alright. Um, it doesn't actually look like it's in the environment here. Because it's, it looks like it's spraying fire everywhere, but then you've got these trees here. Like, wouldn't these trees be on fire because Volcarona is flapping its wings? Probably getting fire all over the place. Like, it should be burning this entire place down. But it's just kind of, uh, just kind of chilling there. I guess the, the, the layering is alright. Like, it, like, you've got the, the wing behind the tree here. Like, it looks like it's between the trees properly, so, you know, that's not bad. It's not a bad artwork, it's just kind of whatever. Volcanian. Um, I like the effects, I guess. Like, it doesn't really look like it's anywhere, but it kind of looks like it's breaking the ground beneath it, maybe sucking it up with the water cannon or, or blowing it away with the water cannons it's got or whatever. Uh, Volcanian's not a very cool-looking Pokemon. It looks kind of dumb, honestly. Um, not that this artist drew it wrong or anything. That's just, you know, again, it's just not a very cool-looking Pokemon. Um, but I think this artist did about as well as they could. 
So I, I guess I like the environment. A nice background, I guess. Uh, just not Vulcanian itself. Not their fault, though. <laughs> Alright, so land it. Um, interesting little art. It's kind of blending in with some with some grass or some wheat, maybe. That's nice. Looks, uh, again, it's kind of got the, a consistent style. Like, the, 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 the background was drawn along with the Pokemon itself. That's nice. And it's Salazzle. Wow, look at that. Really nice coloring. Like, because Salazzle is, like, blackish and purple and, like, magenta. So they kind of made everything around it have colors that blend along with that. Like, the fire is not really drawn in conventional coloring, I guess. It looks more pinkish and purplish uh, so that it doesn't contrast the Pokemon itself very much. And it's also got blowing out this, like, uh, this smog or whatever because it's a poison Pokemon. Very cool. They, they definitely put a lot of thought into the, the color design of this and just how the entire thing should look, not just the Pokemon. That's cool. All right, here's Seal. Uh, it's Kagemaru Himeno, who's one of like one of the OGs. Um, but uh, they're, they're just kind of okay. Really nice background, though. Like I, I, think, I feel like they put a lot more work into the background than they did Seal itself, because Seal just looks really cartoonish and not very cool. Although, again, just, that's just how the Pokemon looks. Um, but the background, like, looks realistic and very nice. So that's cool. No Dugong? We just have a random seal? Why do we have this seal? Did we need this? <laughs> Whatever. Galarian Mr. Mime. Alright. Um, I don't have much of an opinion on that. I feel like I've been saying that... Multi I feel like that's not the first time I've said that for a Shige Nori Nagishi... Art. So sorry to that artist, but hmm. it's all right. Here's Whalmer washing up ashore, spouting out some water. Um, honestly, this is just okay. I don't have many strong opinions of it. I, I guess I like the, the the water splashing around. The water itself looks pretty nice. It's not like they just kind of made some CG water or made it all a solid color. Like they they, they thought about how water should work you know the way it moves gently about in the back and then you know splashing about around the whaler so that's nice here's where lord in the deep sea uh, another kiyotaka art although again not really showing off their strengths all too well but um <laughs> i i think it's interesting i don't know if this is maybe intentional but it kind of looks like this was taken this is like a picture taken by a camera, and then there's like water droplets on the camera. I think that's actually uh, <laughs> kind of interesting. Uh, but it's an alright art. Corefish. Um, yeah, I like this, actually. I like... I like. I, I always like it when when the illustrators draw Pokemon partially submerged in water, kind of giving them different layers there. Um, cause, cause, and sometimes they can make some really unique and interesting poses there. Uh, so yeah, I like this. It's got like this happy little pose. You can, even though Corfish doesn't really have a face, you can tell it's very, very happy, very excited to be in the water, to be dancing in the rain. And yeah, just overall the environment is really nice. Snow Run. Um, yeah, Snow Run. It actually looks like it's raining in this image. Uh, kind of like I said with that whale lord, it almost looks like there looks like there's water droplets on the camera you can kind of tell like it's blowing snow out because like every like the the particles the ice and the water have motion to them there's a little bit of a blur on them there's even a little bit of like a, a light fractal or whatever you want to call it down here like a little bit of a rainbow yeah they actually put quite a bit of a thought into this so that's nice um i think the art, art is all right but they definitely uh worked hard on it they definitely put a lot of thought into it so that's cool Love Disc. It's a Miki Tanaka art. Another longtime artist who has this very, very simplistic style that, honestly, I'm not super enthusiastic about, but I appreciate that they've been around for so long and they've just stuck with this style the entire time. So, <laughs> you go, Miki Tanaka. Shout out to you. Wow, look at that. Koki Saito did it again. Kyogre splashing it about, diving upwards out of the water momentarily. Being in this beautiful little arc 
out of the water. Just look at the water coming off of it. Like, man, how did they even do that? <laughs> how do you draw water like that? Just so detailed, so perfect, honestly. That's really cool. Like, this, this looks like it wasn't easy to make, but... Again, Koki Saito, an OG, a, a freaking goat. They're fantastic, so awesome art right there. And then you get, then you get like something similar but way worse, <laughs> and it's and it's a Pokemon V. So there's Kyogre V. I actually did not know this was a thing. There's a Kyogre V. Is there a Groudon V as well? Uh, it, it's not even a good Pokemon. It does 50 to 2 Pokemon and then 210 for 4 energy. Why did they make a Kyogre V without a... Like, is there... An, th yeah, there's no V Max or V Star. Like, why did they make a Kyogre V but then make it really weak? <laughs> like, this card sucks. And it doesn't look cool. Even though it's Planeta. And again, like I said, Planeta is, like, less offensive than Gobon Graphics or End Design. But... Not by too much. I mean, look, look, like, like this image is trying. This illustration is trying to be the exact same thing, same, the exact, the exact same thing as this image. Both of them are are depicting Kyogre leaping out of the water, but for some reason, this one is so much more detailed than the the fully CG card, which you would think would do water effects a lot better, but they really didn't. The the motion is not captured very well. The speed lines are way too thick and obvious. Like, to me, it doesn't actually make it look like the Pokemon is moving around. It just looks like some bad Photoshop effects. It doesn't really look like it blends in with the water. Like, it, like it's just... Like it, like, it just looks like a static image with a Photoshop background and filters placed over it. That's what it looks like to me. Even, even even the Kyogre here, like, you can see the mountain in the back. Like, you can kind of see some, like, the world it's in. Meanwhile, Planeta couldn't do that. It's just big, vast open sea with a little bit of sun on there. Just, just, ah, uh, it's just so, it, it's so, it, it's just funny how, like, this card is supposed to be, like, the special awesome card that you would be excited to open in a pack, but it looks way worse than this one. The, the regular common card that you probably open... That you probably get in every pack. You just you're you're probably like sick and tired of seeing it because it's probably not that rare of a card. It actually it's actually a rare, isn't it? Because it's got the black star. I actually don't really understand how rares work, how rarity works in this game. I just randomly play it and open packs and don't pay attention to details like that. And now here we've got a Glaceon V. Um, no, it looks like it's farting in my face. Why did they make it like this? Why did they decide this pose was the way to go? Just... No, bro. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm not okay with that. Get that out of here. Uh, no alt art. Well, there there is an alt art glacier on me. Just... I, I meant alt art as in, like... Alt art like this. Sorry. Yeah. Just, just basically the same thing, but a slightly different pose. But, okay, whatever. Alright, Shinx. That is a cute little Shinx. I love Shinx a lot. I hate the Rapid Strike annotation. Get it out of the way. It's blocking, it's blocking the cool Anthony Fantano red flannel hanging up in the background. Uh, but it's a cute, lived-in background. It looks like it's... It looks like it's somewhere... It's someone's beloved Pokemon in their house and that is adorable and there's there's another shinx wow i like this one too got a nice little background looking at some shooting stars man shinx is so cute she is such a great pokemon I, I prefer this one though i actually don't like its face too much in this one it looks like its mouth should be moved down a little bit or somewhere so yeah then there's luxio love this pokemon as well pretty cute. It's got a little, uh, Greedent plush. Uh, and it's, and it looks like it's telling someone, hey, hey, back off my Greedent plush. This is mine. Like, no, you can't pet me. I'm cuddling with my Greedent plush. <laughs> it's having a little fight with its master. Who just wants to snuggle it, but it's like, no. 
No, get away from me. It's maybe like sticking up its tail, wagging it at them. I like that art. And then the, another Luxio art. I like that we've got like the cute art and then the cool art. So here's the, the cute Luxio. Here's the cool Luxio. It's out in a field with a lightning storm. Although I'm going to be honest, the, this, the, the sky and the lightning does not look good. It looks extremely just, just almost like cartoonish. Honestly, because, like, lightning just doesn't really look like that. <laughs> uh, I think Luxio itself looks good. Uh, it's a really nice angle of it, where it, you kind of, like, got the camera basically on the ground, and then it's stepping forward. You kind of get, like, this upward angle of it. I, it's just the sky. That's just what I don't like about it. I guess that's a bit of a grep, though. Now, here's... We have cute Luxio. Is this cute Luxio? <laughs> it's It's... It's laying down right in front of a flower, in front of a little dandelion. I think it's cute. I think Luxray is adorable. Um, yeah, love it a lot. It's pretty cool. The, the, the light on the background, the way the sun is kind of filtering in. It looks like it's uh, in, the, in the early morning. It's just waking up from its sleep, but it doesn't want to be bothered because it's a cat. You don't bother a cat, bro. I like it. This is a nice art. And then cool Luxray right there, yeah, cool Luxray. Um, I think this is actually a new card. Can't tell. There's been there's always lots of Luxray coming out, but um, got a really good ability and a really good attack. Isn't this basically just Talonflame from uh, X Y Steam Siege or some other set? I don't know, but whatever. So good card, and uh, the artwork's all right. Yeah, it looks like it's. Absorb. I don't really know what's going on with the lightning. I don't know if it's like discharging that electricity or if it's absorbing it or whatever. Um, it kind of looks like it's out somewhere in nature, and it's at night, and there and it's got like the some glowing bubbles. I, I kind of know what what they're going for. I'm not really like trying to criticize it like that. It's it's all right. It's just an all right art. I'll move on to Rotom V. Is that even a new art? Did, did they just literally make Rotom V? Again? Because I, I... Yeah, they did. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of here. This is a special art set, Gobon Graphics. By the way, I call them Gobon Graphics. I know most people say Five Bon or Five Band. That doesn't make any sense. It's, it's, it's Gobon Graphics, guys. Okay. Learn to speak Japan. Gosh. Uh, but we have a Rotom V-Star... Which is... Okay. I see. So, the Rotom V-Star is just a stronger version of the Rotom V. That's all it really is. I guess that's fine, because... Th this... This card isn't, like... Terrible. Like, it, it, it it's kind of good. It, it's just maybe a little too slow and maybe a little too difficult to get damage off of and its HP is really low, but it's not like bad. It has a usable ability and it actually can do a lot of damage with uh, you know, all the tool discarding and stuff like well rather the tools are already discarded, you just throw them in a loss zone. So anyway, so they gave it a damage buff here and an HP buff. And also an ability that doesn't end your turn. You discard any number of cards from your hand, then draw that many cards, which is actually all right. I actually think this card might be played, because Rotom V was played a little bit. Just a little bit. It just wasn't quite good enough. But maybe this V-Star will be uh, what sets it apart. Um, in any case, it's a, it's a V-Star, so it's not very good looking, so move on. Emolga. That is a kawaii Emolga. They've got this very light brushy style and they've got all these uh, cute little flowers cute little colors they definitely they definitely made this one for the little girls because i think a little girl would appreciate that i would if i was a little girl that was a weird thing to say let's move on electric where's the temple is this there's a there's an electric but not a temple okay that's unusual unless i already talked yeah what why is there an electric in an, in an electros but not a tint? Like they couldn't just I, I don't know. Okay. That's a little weird. Um cool card though. It looks like it's dipping into some water 
but it's an electric type, so you can see that it's, you know, messing up the water around it by electrifying it. But it looks like it's in a little cave somewhere. You've got all these rocks of different colors, kind of like got like this dirty ground there. Yeah, this is a nice little artwork. And even the the electric itself kind of has like these uh what do you call it? What do you want to, it, it kind of has like this glossy look to it because you know it's a it's a slimy watery eel, so it should look like that. That's nice. Oh, not even in electros, just electric specific. What? That is so weird. Oh well. Uh, here's helioptile. Uh, drawn by Oswaldo Kato, who I think does environments better than they do Pokemon, but they at least tried with the very uh, energetic pose here. See, this this lightning looks a lot better. I mean, it's not like trying to be realistic, but the artist has this painterly kind of style to the way they draw uh, nature, I guess. And actually, you can barely tell here and here the trees, the leaves, actually reflect the lightning. Like, there's actually lighting applied uh, here. So, that's pretty cool. Some nice little detail. See, Kato's great at drawing backgrounds. That's why they get, that's why they draw all the good stadiums. Whenever Pokemon needs a good-looking stadium, they get Oswaldo Kato to do it. Heliolisk. There's two of them. One of them kind of, uh, phasing outward. Actually cool that they, uh, drew it like this, because... This is kind of one of the battle poses that you don't really see just by looking at Heliolisk normally. At least I don't think. Yeah, see? This is what it usually looks like. It's just like a lizard guy. Uh, but then it's got like the, the sun fate, the, its sun neck popping out. So that's kind of cool. Although it doesn't look like it's very sunny. So... Like it doesn't look like the sun is shining down on it. In fact, you can kind of see the clouds out there. It, doesn't it look like this when it's sunny? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe I won't overthink this. It looks alright. Radiant Charge Bug. Interesting card to get in... A, 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 to get a Radiant. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to be played at all because that's just not a very good ability, frankly. This ability would be great if it was put t two damage counters on any Pokemon. You know, if, if your opponent's Pokemon put... It, it put an ener attaches an energy to any Pokemon. Put two damage counters on. But instead, they had to specifically say V. So I don't really know why. Um, can I get rid of this bottom menu? This is bothering me. I just want to look at the cards, bro. Ugh, whatever. Um, nice artwork though. I actually really really like this. I like that they they make th this artist really made it a point that this is a shiny. Charger Buck. This is not just any random Charger Buck. This is the Radiant Charger Buck. So, they depict that by having other Charger Buck in the background. They're like, this is what Charger Buck normally looks like. Here's Radiant Charger Buck. Sitting in the middle of the image, pose on a rock, and then you got like the sun shining down on it. Just everything about it looks really, really nice. That's actually probably the best art of any Radiant Pokemon we've had. That, or I guess Radiant Greninja. Although, Honestly, not setting a high bar there, because a lot of Radiants don't have actual artwork. Uh, but it's still really, really nice artwork. I like it a lot. Zara Aura. Uh, laying down in some grass there. Pretty cool. I don't have particularly strong feelings about it, but it looks nice. Zara Aura V. You know, for a Gobun graphics card, I actually don't hate this one. It doesn't look like it has a background, but... They at least made Zara Aura look a little cool with its pose and the, the blue lightning. See, this is where you actually want to have some kind of lighting, some kind of effect sprayed all over the image. You know, the, the blue lightning coming out of Zara Aura looks cool. Like, that's what it's supposed to be doing. So, you know what? I don't hate this. I'm not, like, super enthusiastic about it, but I think it's an alright looking card. So, good job, Gobon Graphics. Um, here's a Zera or a VMAX with a, a surprisingly normal looking art. Like, usually VMAX cards with the regular artwork are done in CG. Um, this I actually really don't like. 
I don't like this at all. It looks like it's just standing awkwardly. It looks like this image is part of something else, but then because Pokemon decided all VMAX cards need to have the same stupid background, and by that I mean they have no background, it's just some void with a bunch of stupid swirly Photoshop swirls. Like, what is even happening in, in VMAX cards? Like, what is all of this? I don't know. But every regular VMAX card has to look like this. Someone decided it. So, it looks like Zero Aura should be standing somewhere. But they cut that out completely for the, the VMAX background. And I don't like it at all. Like, it doesn't fit. Like, it just does not fit the background at all. It looks like it should be in a completely different image. Um, it's, like, just standing there in a really boring pose. It doesn't look like it's about to deal 240 damage to me. It looks like it's just, <laughs> I don't know, waiting for someone. Yeah, maybe this is also because I just don't like Zero Aura's design in general. I just think it looks like a fursona, honestly. <laughs> like, it just looks like a guy in a fursuit, really. Um, but, yeah, this art is... Not, not good. What is the other Zero Aura? What does that card look like? You know, do I like that better? They did. It's a. It's not a good rendering of Zero Aura, but I guess it. It matches the background a little bit better. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think there's a. There's a, not none of these. None of those illustrations win. <laughs> there is no winner between the two. I just hate both of them so uh, yeah sorry nisato niso i guess it's nice that it's not a cg illustration it, it looks like it was hand drawn so that's cool but yeah just not a good looking vmax card as usual all right zero aura v star it looks like a plastic figure with the v star background so uh, a spacey sparkly void with a gold swirl it does not look good and also, I forgot to mention that I also hate the V-Star power box. Like, why did they decide to have this just generic, like, supernova graphic in the V-Star power to just completely obstruct the image? I don't, I don't get why they did that. I hate V-Star cards. <laughs> I do not like them. I hate V-Star cards. I'm sorry. I'm glad we're getting rid of them. I'm glad we're doing something else. We're going to have Terrastall Pokemon cards, which look terrible. <laughs> oh, man. Well, we have uh, this Pinkurchin, which, uh, or Pinchurchin, I don't know. Pinkurchin, I think, that's what I call it. Uh, this looks nice. It looks like it's a, uh, well, it just looks like a thing. It looks funny. It looks spiky. I like the water. I, I like it being underwater. You got, it kind of looks like there might be stuff around it with the way these bubbles are floating up. There's someone breathing down there. And then you got the uh, sunlight filtering in on top of it. With this very nice, colorful little uh, rock base. It's standing on some nice, colorful rocks. Looks nice. Egg cute. Uh, pretty interesting. <laughs> Wait, they're meditating under a waterfall. Wait, this is actually really funny. This is a weird interpretation for Execute because I think Execute typically look really, really silly, which you know, makes sense. They're just eggs. <laughs> they're just eggs with angry faces. And I like that there's one who's really taking it seriously. There's one guy who's meditating very seriously and everyone else is like trying to bother him. <laughs> I like it. I like this part. Very interesting. And the, the the environment itself looks really, really nice. It looks like they're really high up. Um, actually, no, not really. Actually, yeah, you know what? The depth on this is a little bit weird. This cliff looks really, really tall and really, really short at the same time. I don't really understand. So, yeah. It, it still has some nice detail, though. So, I like it overall. Executor. Um, kind of walking around some kind of strange looking background actually um i guess the panorama the panoramic view of it isn't bad but i just don't like the tr the, the trees just kind of lined up like that i don't really know what's going on in the background like where is it it doesn't look very good honestly not really a fan of this one mewtwo ooh 
See, Atsushi Fusara, another amazing artist in this TCG. Once again, legendary Pokemon, getting an amazing background. Or, not an amazing background, just an amazing illustration overall. It looks like it caused some kind of nuclear explosion in a volcano. I don't even know how it did that, but it's Mewtwo, so I'm not going to question it. It looks like it's trying to destroy the entire world. It's Frieza, blowing a hole in dynamic with this Dark Ball. Oh, it's super cool. Mewtwo is just... It's hard to draw Mewtwo not looking awesome, honestly. So yeah, great art there. Alright, we've got Mew V. Um, it's just kind of flying around in a city. Um, at least it looks somewhere. The the Mew itself doesn't look very good, and I think the, uh, like, again, the, the Photoshop lighting effects do, do not look good at all. They look way too obviously pasted on there. So it kind of makes Mew not look like it's actually flying through this background. It just looks like it was pasted on to a background someone else made. But it's not terrible, I guess. Although I think I would prefer the regular Mew V because it's drawn by Mitsuhiro Marita. Yeah, see? Look at Mew. And like, I don't know what is going on in the background. It's in cyberspace or something. Or maybe stuck inside of someone's computer. But it looks cool. Yeah, look at this dude. Looks like it's broadcasting some weird psychic waves into you. It's doing something. Yeah, I would just, I would just, like, why did they get Mitsuhiro Arita to draw Mew V, and then they were just like, yo, Planeta, bring us another Mew V, that looks way worse. Like, wh why did they bother? Um, they didn't even do another v Mew V Max, so, it's, <laughs> Pokemon works in mysterious ways sometimes, I guess. Giraffe Rig, that is a, I like the lines on the background, it looks very, like, stark, kind of serious. And uh, Giraffarig actually looks like it belongs into, the, into said background. It's got a very unique style to it. Very distinct looking. I like it. Lunatone. Um, it, it looks like it's gazing into some water, but it doesn't look all that great, honestly. Uh, I guess I kind of like the watercolor water, honestly. It looks alright. And uh, this is another image that looks like... Maybe I've already seen this artist before. Maybe this is what I said for a different uh, illustration about this artist. But it looks like the image has a texture to it. I don't remember what card I said that about, but... Eh, I'm not even going to go back and look. But, yeah. I, I guess it's not bad. Here is Dustclops. Uh, giving you some nightmares. I actually like that it's floating upward. I always imagine Dusclops being a really, really heavy Pokemon with its big stumpy legs, and it's got like this fat coffin body. It says it's only 67 and a half pounds, which is actually not a lot. But still, I always imagine it being really heavy, so seeing it floating like this... I think if I saw a Dusclops floating in my room or wherever, I would probably scream. I'd run away. Like, ah, no! Don't, don't stare into its eye. Although, once again, a stage 1 Pokemon with no basic or stage 2 attached to it in this set. I don't I don't know why. But, uh, yeah, it, it looks alright. I also like its creepy, curved hands. I don't want Dusk... I don't want Dusclops to curl its hands at me. Ugh! Oh, it's, this, this image is too spooky! I need to go! Tapu Lele! I need to be saved by Tapu Lele and its cute little flowers. Yeah, is this the one who did the, uh... What was that art that I was talking about earlier with the flowers? Where was it? How far back was it? Alright. I'm lost. I got lost somewhere. Emolga. Yeah, Saya Suruta. Saya Suruta. Same artist. Okay. I, I, I can see what this artist is all about now. They like flowers. They like light uh, pastel colors. They like pink and blue, and periwinkle, and I respect that. Tapu Lele fits into this very well. So this is a nice little art. Hatterene V. See, this is a cool looking V. I wish all Vs were this interesting looking. Uh, it it kind of looks like it's trying to camouflage itself into a forest, 
And then someone noticed, because Hatterene is a bright blue and pink Pokemon, it does not blend into trees very well, and it looks like it's very bothered that someone noticed it, so now it's trying to kill me with its creepy hand thingy. It's creepy claw hand. Ah! So spooky! I like it. I like it. The style is interesting. It's a fierce looking action. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like a plastic toy with a bunch of Photoshop swirls attached to it in some random uh, pre-rendered background. It looks like a Pokemon in a place doing a thing. And I really like that. So great job, Kawa Yu. One of the better one of the better artists in the TCG. They should be able to do more V cards like this. Well, we don't have any V cards anymore. This is it. This is the last Pokemon V you'll ever see. Because Hatterene is gonna kill you! Ah! Hatterene V Max. Uh speaking of, it's a it's a Pokemon V Max. It's a uh, really boring looking thing in a void. With lights. Or whatever. Let's move on. Enamorous. Uh, this is by Jiro Sasumo, who I, I know is one of the old, like, Pokemon Illustrator Grand Prix, Prix winners, or whatever the contest was for Pokemon artists. So yeah, they're just in the game now, and they do fantastic stuff. Lots of detail on the flowers here. Uh, you got the, like, the daisies or whatever these, po these cards, the, the, these flowers are... The daisies, the daffodils. I don't know what flowers are. I don't go outside, but I know that these are sakura blossoms. You got lots of different layers of flowers here, of different colors, and it's very nice, very beautiful. And an Emerus V, honestly, I don't really like the look of this thing, but it looks like it's there and kind of enjoying itself. So that's pretty cool. Also, four lines of text for the Pokedex entry. I don't think I've seen that. Is that normal? Is that rare? Or are there other cards like that? Because I think that's the first time I've seen that. Graveler. Ooh, Akira Egawa. Here is arguably the best artist in the TCG. And we will know, you will know why I think that eventually in this video. Um, but their style is awesome. They've like got this cool painterly style, but they managed to make their art look so... Like, uh, so striking. So powerful looking. You know? So here's Graveler grabbing a rock and smashing it right in front of you, showing off its great strength. And it's running at you, which is probably really scary because Graveler shouldn't be able to run very fast. But it looks like it's running really, really fast, or it's charging at you really, really fast. It's not rolling. No. No. It's, it, it's above that. Literally, because it's in the air. Whoa! So yeah, really cool looking pose on the Pokemon. Really cool illustration on the Pokemon, and the background looks nice and detailed as well. Very, very nice. Soul Rock. Um, he's just kind of floating there. But there's actually a, a very interesting... There's something odd about this art, and I can't actually quite put my finger on it. But it almost looks like it has a blur in the right corner. I guess it's because of the, uh, the light that's... Uh, shining through it like you, you can kind of see it there's like a there's like a blur on the on the right side of it hmm i mean i know it was intentional i'm just not entirely sure how it works i'm not really sure honestly i feel like there's more going on in this image than i i fully realize but for the most part it just kind of looks like soul rock is just floating in the middle of somewhere and not really doing anything but they try to make it look cooler by uh, having this light shine on it in a very unique way, I guess. And there's also, like, debris flying around. I don't really know what's going on with that. I, maybe this card will make more sense up close when I get it. But for right now, I honestly don't really get it. I think it's just kind of weird looking. And, and like, it, it's boring looking, but also there's a lot going on that I don't understand. So maybe there's something I'm missing about it. So, uh, yeah. Baltoy. Uh, I don't really know where it's supposed to be. It kind of looks like it's in space, but there's, like, some weird structure back there. And then it looks like there's lava beneath it. I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> you know, I should zoom in like that more. I should do that more. Um, it looks alright, though, I guess. Yeah, I don't really have any complaints about it. 
It was just kind of whatever. Riolu uh, is kind of standing there in a park or wherever. Actually, looks like it, there's a lot all the way back. Looks like it's been walking on this road for a while. It's on a long journey. Um, or maybe it's about to embark on a long journey. Like it's saying, like it's it's facing its trainer, saying goodbye, and then it's going to run away real fast. Um, I actually have no idea what's going on. It's also got like these like supersonic waves going by. I'm actually not entirely sure why. Yeah, this is kind of like the uh, the Soul Rock, <laughs> where maybe there's something else going on that I'm not really understanding, but I, I don't hate this. And I didn't hate the Soul Rock art either. It's just kind of whatever. Um, yeah. All right, Pancham. Cool Pokemon. And it's uh, standing in a tree. It climbed this tree. It looks like it's real proud of itself for climbing this tree. And it's like, oh, yeah. What do you think, son? I climbed this tree. Now I can see the sun more clearly. I'm going to chew on this leaf. It's tasty. And if I need to chew on another leaf, I will because there's leaves all around me. They're blowing. A nice gentle breeze is blowing is blowing these leaves around me. And that's nice. The breeze feels good. This tree is pretty cool. I like this art. Rockruff. Look at Rockruff howling at the moon. Um, what does this art style remind me of? It reminds me of, like, some old kids program I can't quite remember I can't, can't quite think of what though there's a way it's interesting this artist is this Okacheke? it is this artist has like this very painterly style like I can tell they, they use like soft wet paints for their uh, illustrations and yet at the same time there's their image their their colors look really really solid so, <laughs> I don't know if this would make sense, but their art kind of gives me, like, a claymation vibe, honestly. Like, it almost looks like a solid object made out of clay. Like, I'm looking at a Yukamori art, even though it's completely different, and I know that's not really what they're going for. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's like, they, they make solid-looking layers, or objects, or creatures, or whatever, despite using very soft techniques i guess does that make sense at all <laughs> it probably doesn't but i like this art nice little uh pose of rock rough howling at the moon uh I, the sky itself looks pretty nice even if the moon is gigantic i think if the moon was actually that big we would all be dead from the gravitational pull um so actually zero out of ten artwork this rock rough should be floating in the stratosphere right now because the moon is the moon has can't the moon has come in it's too big um the moon needs to be sm <laughs> I, I don't care it, it doesn't matter um it's nice i like this art and then lichen rock dusk specifically because it's at night rock rough howled at the moon so much that it evolved into edgy emo lichen rock Uh, it looks alright. Yeah. Kind of generic night imagery, honestly, with, like, dead trees, fog, moonlight, dead leaves, or dead grass, barren, wasteland, whatever. Uh, it doesn't look bad. It's it's alright. It's just alright. Coughing! A very, very simple-looking coughing. Blowing fart gas at some buildings and laughing about it. Like, it just dropped a whoopee cushion on someone. It did the old whoopee cushion trick on someone. Um, yeah, I like this. It's a very simple illustration. Looks cute. Absol! See, this is exactly the kind of illustration I want Absol to have. Absol needs to look edgy. It, look, it needs to look fierce. It needs to look dark. It needs to be in, like, a dark cave or wherever. It looks like it just slashed a couple of things like that's what the light opening up looks like you just cut something open with its head blade yeah it looks awesome this looks cool i like this a lot great art purloin uh purloin <laughs> it's messing up someone's work it's gonna close out of their uh microsoft Excel or whatever they've got open on this. 
<laughs> it even has the window where it's like, do you want to save? And then the, the cursor is on don't save. And it's like, <laughs> I'm going to delete all your work because I'm a cat and I'm laying on your keyboard. Very funny art. I like it. Uh, it's pretty cute. So that's cool. Life hard. Um, it's running. This life hard is running. I have no strong feelings about it. It's a life hard that's running. Crook or rock? Okay, so I guess that's a. Uh, this is a thing for Crown Zenith. Just regular. Just stage one Pokemon having illustrations for seemingly no reason. Sand Isle isn't in this. Crocodile isn't in this. Just like Geodude and Golem aren't in this. I guess they just could not be bothered with making Stage 2 Pokemon, but they wanted to have some representation, so they put the Stage 1 in. They, instead of cutting the middleman, they, they, they only included the middleman, I guess. Um, so here's Crookerock. Looks alright. No strong opinions on this. Pangoro. Interesting little art, I guess. Uh, it got a lot of detail on it. Well, not necessarily a lot of detail, but... I don't know, something about it. It looks very spiky, I guess. I like the way they drew it. I like the way they drew its fur. Uh, it looks like it's walking out somewhere. On a nice, partly cloudy evening. Going for a little stroll. It looks alright. I'm not enthusiastic about it, but it looks nice. Skrelp! What is going on here? I cannot really tell what is going on, but it looks interesting. Like, it, maybe maybe the whole point is to be abstract. It, I guess it, this is supposed to be seaweed, but it's all in different colors. Uh, maybe to reflect the fact that Skrelp itself is weirdly colored. It's like a, a seaweed seahorse, but it's brown and purple and blue. It's interesting. Very, very interesting. I kind of like it. I wish it was maybe a little more centered. But yeah. And then Dragalge. Or Dragalge. Um, pretty interesting. I like its uh, arms, I guess. You just spread out so wide. Kind of bowing. I think this is a battle pose. Very interesting looking. And then it's got nice looking underwater environment. Uh, it looks nice. Lots of, like, bubbles floating up to the surface. Lots of stuff just on the ground. I don't really know where it is. It almost looks like that's a tombstone all the way in the back, maybe. Um, but it's nice. <coughs> Excuse me. Nice sir. Hoopa. Wow. Wow, that is crazy. Look at this. Soichiro Gunjima. This dude never misses. He is... One of the modern day goats. It's like every card he draws is a banger. There's so much going on in this, but it's awesome. Again, legendary Pokemon getting the craziest arts. It's opening up a portal to hell or whatever Hoopa does. Um, I actually like Hoopa Unbound. It looks pretty cool, I think. It looks like ridiculous, but at the same time, I appreciate it. And it's just, yeah, it's just so weird and evil looking. I like it. Like it's, it's like an evil gin. Yeah, really, really cool art though. Just so much going on and such a such a loud dynamic pose. Yeah, this is definitely the art I would use if I was gonna play Hoopa, which I guess is somewhat usable in a turn as Dex or whatever, as a, like some random single prize attacker. But anyway, yeah, cool art. Galarian Meowth. Uh, honestly, just kind of boring. Just exists. Yeah. Uh, it's got, a, like, a, a cute, simple style, but it just doesn't really look like much is going on. Here we go, though. Here's a, a similarly cute style, but it looks like something's actually happening. Happening. It looks like it's stomping around on the ground, kicking up some dust, kind of laughing at someone or something i don't know maybe it's just having a good old laugh at itself maybe it just thinks life is funny and therefore it should laugh who's gonna tell it to stop it'll probably it'll probably slash something cut something up it'll cut you up if you tell it to stop laughing maybe that's why it's laughing it knows that it, it's annoying you but you can't do anything about it because it's got super sharp claws Ugh. 
Yeah, it's going to use those sharp claws to deal 90 damage for two energy. You don't want any of that. Crazy. Yeah, nice art. I like it. Scizor. Is it ever possible to make Scizor not look like the coolest Pokemon of all time? Just look at this guy. Look at him. It's pointing its claw up. Just to get a little wind out of its face. Or maybe it's charging up an attack. Maybe it's charging up like a Rasengan or something. <laughs> uh, but it also looks really relaxed at the same time. Like it doesn't look like it. It's, it's taking a lot of effort to either charge an attack or resist the wind around it. It's just kind of like, maybe it just wants the wind out of its face, you know? It's just a little bit, it, it, it just doesn't want to be annoyed by it. But it's cool. Very collected, very cool. Um, lots of motion on like the wind, uh, particularly on its wings back here. Just really nice looking art overall. But again, hard to miss with Scizor. Uh, Aron, messing with the broken wheel, I guess. Um, I, I, I kind of like how simple the art is. You can kind of see, like, the individual strokes of the brush that this artist took on this, uh, card. It gives it a nice personal touch. I think that's nice. Laron, um, interesting little style. I don't know if we've seen this artist before. Mina Nakai? Kind of nice. It's got like this uh, thick style to it. Um, what was this? Was this like drawn in crayon or something? Like the art, the lines or something? It's it, it's nice. Yeah, it's nice and consistent. I like the thick outlines. Uh, the simple use of colors. Just nothing too crazy. Um, yeah, not, not not like lots of details on the lighting or anything. They they just kept it very very simple, but. I appreciate that. It looks nice and consistent. Pretty cool. Alright, Agron. Um, honestly, it just kind of looks like a fairly generic art of this Pokemon. Can't really say too much about it. It's just, it exists. It'll, it looks alright. It doesn't look bad or anything. Just not exciting. Alright, Metang. Uh, it's stomping on something, but honestly, it doesn't look like too much. Um... Yeah, it's just kind of, it's just kind of whatever. Pawniard, ooh, ooh, I would not want to be this leaf right now. It is gonna cut that leaf up, just like it cut up that tree. I like, I like that you can tell it's doing some training. Gonna go after this leaf. It's already marked this tree a few times. Pretty cool. I like that you can uh, just kind of tell what's going on in this guy's life. Yeah. And then, <laughs> all right, here you get the very detailed, very, uh, uh, you know, like, action-oriented illustration here. Very dramatic looking. And then, Yukimori clay figure. <laughs> I love Yukimori's art so much. Um, I love the figures that she makes. I love the, the I, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that she literally just takes... A clay figure and then finds a place to picture them because this is like a real environment uh, and they take she takes nice pictures of them and that's the uh, that's the card art <laughs> I love it I like like I seriously unironically love Yuka Mori's art it's so unique like it really there th no one does card illustrations like Yuka Mori in Pokemon and I think it's really really cool it, it just adds something new to them Bisharp. Um, here's Bisharp, kind of doing what Scizor is doing, where it's uh, deflecting the wind blowing at it. But honestly, it's not really as cool. It's all right. I'm not particularly crazy about it. I actually think Bisharp itself looks nice, but I think the wind effect is excessive. Honestly, like it's too, it's just, it's just too bright and too obvious. Uh, but yeah, Fish Sharp itself looks cool. Here is Zashian. Wow, look at that. Zashian letting the sunlight glow right over it. Let its golden body shine. The sunlight that's just barely peeking out of these 
heavy clouds. It looks like it's, it's actually on top of... I just now realized... Okay, so I was about to say I'm not really sure what's going on with the background. Because it looks like it's on like a small rock. But then there are these, that, the, these entire mountains that don't look very tall behind it. But then I realized Zashin is in the clouds. These are clouds. Like Zashin is in a really, really high up place. And it's just kind of standing on a rock there. That's cool. This is really... Uh, oh no. Ah, uh, go back! What? Help! <laughs> How do I go back? I didn't mean to do that! I clicked on something! Oh, also, I like that it's called... Wait. The card is called Battle Legion. Was this a card that was printed in Battle Legion? Because Battle Legion is a set from Japan. It was a Japanese set that became part of... Um our astral radiance set that's really fun i wonder if that was like intentional or not i mean pro i mean i'm sure it was intentional but i wonder if this was a card originally printed in that set and we're only just now getting it but in, in any case nice art nice art that's what i want to say um here's zashi and v um i was about to say why do we have another zashi and v but i guess it's because old zashi and v is rotating and so they want to have another one because we have Zashin V star now um, I don't know it's whatever yeah I have no strong feelings about it there it's another Zashin V although that being said this does 260 damage to a V max which is actually not too bad for a regular V it's not as good as old Zashin V. Yeah, actually this sucks compared to Zashin. Like, Zashin V just dealt 230. Like, who cares? And had a really good ability. This one has... Or this one only does 260 to V Maxes, which... Who is even playing V Maxes anymore? Everyone's playing V Stars. Like, I guess this one shots cure on V Max, if that's still a thing. Maybe it will be a thing, because Drizzle's rotating. Whatever. Anyway... Zashin V-Star. I actually have no idea what this card does. I'm going to read it. 2 metal, 1 colorless, 200. As it isn't affected by weakness. Well, that's stupid. Or any other effects. So it goes through, like, mill tank, I guess. But if you can't hit for weakness, then what's the point? And then Sword Star, 310. It does 30 damage to itself. Why? <laughs> why would you want to use that why does it deal damage to itself Charizard V does 320 for 4 energy just like this but doesn't do recoil damage like I feel like the drawback of a V-Star attack or a V-Star power attack I guess should be that you only get 1 in a game but for some reason this has to deal 30 damage to itself as well stupid and the card itself doesn't look good. It's a Govon graphics card. Whatever. Ooh, look at that. Look at that, Zamazenta. Zamazenta is one of the worst designed Pokemon ever. I do not like it. I don't know if anyone likes Zamazenta. But at least here, it looks kind of fierce. Because it's walking slowly through a nicely illustrated forest. Very, very nice. So good job, Ghidorah. You did a as good as well as you could at making Zamazenta look cool. Zamazenta V. You may discard your hand and draw five cards. Wait, that's actually not bad. Oh, this can actually this will probably be a good card. I can actually see this getting played. Yeah. How how the tables turn. Z Zamazenta V is the better card in in the game now. Uh V star oh my god, that is a long V star power. Okay, 220 for 3 energy, whatever. Once during your turn, you may use this ability. During your opponent's next turn, all your Pokemon take 100 less damage from attacks. Oh, okay. That's just a lot of, like, extra clarifications. Uh, alright, I guess. Yeah. It can prevent a 1-hit KO, so that's kind of cool, I guess. Um, but, yeah. I guess this card will be alright. The art sucks. Anyway, Rayquaza V... I, we have this already. We already have these. Wasn't this a promo in one of, in something? 
Like it's it's literally just it's just regular Rayquaza V Max except like mirrored. And then we have why do we oh my god, why do we have two of them? Was this necessary? <laughs> Who cares? No one plays Rayquaza V Max. Just just reprint the uh, alternate art that costs like six hundred dollars. And then you have a set right there. Um, yeah, neither of these look good. Why- we have to have two of them? Like... I- I don't understand why anyone felt that was necessary. None of them look good. Alright, moving on. Duraludon V! Duraludon is a stupid looking Pokemon. And I don't know why we have another one of these. Duraludon V Max. Um... Again, not sure why we needed another one. Like, okay, Le legitimate question. Who actually thought that we would need another illustration when the illustration looks like the same one, but rotated? <laughs> like, that's what this looks like! It looks like they took... <sighs> not what I wanted. It looks like they just took Duraludon VMAX and, I don't know, rotated it. Like, 30 degrees. Like, ooh, it's the same exact car, but now it's facing you more directly. Because that was necessary. Like, it's even by Planeta, so I doubt they even had to make a new model for it. They literally just rotated it. That's freaking terrible, bro. That's so dumb. Why would we need that? Like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know why they felt the need to make that card. To make this card. So dumb. Radiant Eternatus. Um, so this is kind of like the other Radiants where it's just the shiny Pokemon, but there's no background. Although I guess there is at least something. Like, I, I, like the colorful swirl looks kind of interesting, I guess. It's just kind of a shame how... Eternatus is like the biggest Pokemon ever made and so they decided to give a cool special card for it to show off its shiny form and then they can't be bothered to make like an actual background for it just just some kind of a uh, I don't know colorful image color just have a gr color gradient in the background that's it that dis that's disappointing uh, the card itself is good, though. When you play from your hand to your bench, you search for two VMAX and put them onto your bench. Uh, it's got a completely broken ability. So that will be cool. I was just kind of making fun of one card for hitting VMAXs. Yeah, I was, hit I was making fun of Zashian because it hits VMAXs. And I'm like, lol, no one plays VMAXs. Maybe I stand corrected. Alright, there is a Ditto. I like this a lot. It's a Kiyotaka artwork. It's just Ditto posing all excitedly. He's like, hey, I'm Ditto. I turn into whatever your heart desires. And that's how the ability works. It can use the attacks of any basic Pokemon, except for Pokemon with rule boxes. Great card. Uh, it's really awesome, and I love this illustration. I just love how, I love how dynamic and, and exciting it is. And it's just a goo monster. <laughs> like, Ditto's just so silly looking, but it's... You know, it, it, it's a pose and it, 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 it's posed with such triumph. It has such a triumphant look to it. I love it a lot. EVV. This looks terrible. Why do we have another EVV? Who asked for this? I hate its face. Its face looks crooked and wrong. It, it looks like its mouth is bleeding off of its chin. Um, and it doesn't look like anything's happening. It looks like it's it looks like it's running, but there's so much like wind force animation behind it that it just completely obscures everything behind it. There's a rainbow there because someone decided that it needed a little more detail, a little more color, but that doesn't really fix the issue. It just does not look good. I'm sorry, you Eribi. You probably were very proud of yourself for this, and I respect you. I just don't like this art. In my personal opinion, which is not worth anything. Oh, here's you see this 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 is like a this is like a Yukamori. Someone makes 
like uh, someone makes knitted figures of Pokemon and takes pictures of them, and that's the illustration, and it's great. So yeah, there's a nice little uh, knitted Snorlax laying on a on a felt background. I I love it. It has such a personal look to it. Very very cool. Asako Ito. I will remember that name. Starly! There is a bunch of Starly in this image. That's kind of cool. Just a nice illustration of it overall, but then it's kind of flying with his whole flock. The clouds look nice. The rays of sunshine beaming down on it look pretty cool. Nice art. Bidoof! Taking a bite out of a little stump. It looks like it's already been eating this stump a little bit. You got some bark missing from the side. This the stump itself looks really, really uneven. Like it's been chewed off a bit. Nice card. Really, really cool. Really cute. And a chatot. It looks like it's getting pelted with rain. It wishes it wouldn't be pelted with rain. Or maybe it's trying to take shelter. I think it's hiding under a leaf. You can't really tell. I think the image might have a bit of an unfortunate crop, but it's a nice little art. It tells a little bit of a story. Um, I kind of wish Chatot wasn't glowing. Like there's a, a, a very, very light, soft glow to it, I guess to make it stand out from the background a little more, but I wish it didn't have that. I want it to stand out in the back. I, I want it to, to, to blend into the background more. Um, so yeah. I guess that's my one big gripe with it. Reggie Gigas V. It's doing something. Um, it's doing something that's blurring like half the image, and I don't think that's very cool. Otherwise, it might look interesting. Kind of cool. <coughs> but yeah, it's a V with 240 HP. That's a lot. And it does 10 more damage for each damage counter on it. Oh, that could actually be kind of good. Actually, you can, uh, it, it'll take an, a hit for 230, and then hit for 330. For three energy, as a V. Huh, not bad. That's never going to happen, but it's there. Reggie Gigas V-Star with 300 HP. Whoa! It does 230 damage for three energy, and then... If your opponent has exactly one prize card remaining, you may choose one of your opponent's benched Pokemon and discard it! Cool ability. I don't know how often that's going to get played. Um, but it's interesting, I guess. And I don't really know how game-changing that would be. I, I would imagine this card is going to get busted completely in expanded though because that's a thing that happens in expanded you've got like oh god yeah this thing is broken with giratina and garchomp tag team i just thought about it just oh oh no because gear because because you know expanded is such a healthy format Discard one of your opponent's Pokemon and all cards attached to it. If this Pokemon has at least three extra fighting energy attached to it, in addition to this attack's cost, discard two of your opponent's Pokemon instead. So, you, I don't know, manipulate your prizes in a way where you only have one left. You play this guy, you use the ability to discard a card, and then you use GG Edge to discard the other two Pokemon. You can, uh, oh my god, you know what you can do? You can use Cyrus Prism Star! You can use Cyrus Prism Star. Yeah, yeah. Your opponent chooses two bench Pokemon and shuffles all others um, into their deck. So use Cyrus Prism Star, and then use this ability to discard the other uh, one bench Pokemon. Then your opponent only has two bench Pokemon left. Then you use GG End, and it's GG. That's so stupid. That is actually, legitimately, the dumbest thing ever, and it is 100% going to happen. Someone is going to do that, and it is going to be a problem, and I don't like that. So, screw you, Reggie Gigas, and your Planeta art that doesn't look good, as usual, because you're a V-Star card. I don't like you. 
I don't like your existence. You're unhealthy. You have too much HP because they're fat. Lose weight. Shaman. Yukiko Baba. That's another really, really old artist in the TCG. Well, not that they're old. I don't know how old they are. But they've been around for a long time. Um, and they've had, they've always had this very, very simple style. Honestly, it doesn't look great. I guess this is the one legendary that didn't get a great artwork. But there's a personal style to it, and I appreciate it. I like the sudden beaming down on it. I kind of actually, I actually like the way it glows. In, um, just in the background like that. It's, it's alright. Stoutland V. Um, there's a new art of a Stoutland V. Uh, okay. Alright, I guess. It's another CG art, it looks like. Why did we need that? I don't know. Young Goose. Um... Honestly, the the little flat plateau makes me think of Paldea for some reason. <laughs> this art's a little bit early, maybe, because I see Young Goose all the time in in, in uh, this Pokemon Violet. It's all right, I guess. Gum shoes. This is interesting. You got the gum shoes standing firm with its arms crossed, and then you got the Young Goose behind it. Like, yeah, yeah, you're you're talking to the boss right now. Don't mess with the boss! It's alright. Oranguru. Uh, very simple art. Um, I th yeah, I've definitely seen this artist before. Sekio. Because I was about to make like a Sekiro joke. Uh, what was the last card we saw them do? We'll find it. It's somewhere. No, that wasn't it. It's not that far back, is it? I missed it somewhere. I missed it somewhere. Okay, well, whatever. It doesn't matter. It's alright. Greedent V. Again, we have a new art. Although, I guess this one's alright. It's better than the other regular Greedent V art. I think... Yeah, that looks dumb. I don't, I, like, eh. like, it doesn't look like it's doing anything, and then they just threw in the berries, because it's like, oh, hey, Greedin is a Pokemon that eats berries, don't forget the berries, and they're like, oh, oh, we forgot, and then they threw in the berries at the last second. Actually, that one's a lot better. See, see, now it's actually doing something. It still kind of looks like they threw in some berries last second, but at least it's holding some in this one. But you know what? This one looks better. This one looks a lot better. It doesn't look as goofy. Um... Yeah. Yeah, I, this one's alright. I'm not crazy about it, but it, it's better than the other Greed and V arts. Aside from the alt art. Here's a Wooloo. I Is it upside down? It looks silly. It's rolling around on the ground. Yeah, the, the, its curly fleece is such an effective cushion that this Pokemon could fall off a cliff and stand right back up at the bottom unharmed. That's cute. That's funny. What a funny Pokemon. Wooloo is a funny Pokemon. Uh, it looks alright. Dubwool. Dubwool racing some rolling boulders. And looks like it's winning slightly. It's slightly winning this race, but look at the... Look at how fast those boulders are rolling. They look like they're rolling really, really fast. And yet, Dubwool is faster. But pretty cool. Nice dynamic... Illustration. Once again, by the guy, Sonosuke Sakuma. Remember the name. Oh! Oh! It's an it's, a, it's an autographed supporter. We're finally getting those. We got the, the, the autographed Marnie in 2021. And there are autographed supporters that exist in Japan. But for some reason, we never got the others. And finally, it looks like we're just kind of randomly getting them in Crown Zenith. Better time than any. So yeah. Um, I guess this art's nice. Looks like she's out somewhere shopping or whatever. Cool. And uh, her signature is very interesting. But interesting. Yeah, just just interesting. Alright, here's Beady. 
uh, trying, it looks like he's uh, doing laundry or whatever. Uh, what is going on with this signature, though? How do the signatures work? I don't get it. That's just that's not a signature, bro. That's just some that's just some some glyphs. Um, but yeah, nice little art, I guess. Crushing hammer, digging duo. Who in the hell are these guys? Flip a coin. If heads, look at the bottom eight cards of your deck and put one of them into your hand. If tails, look at the bottom three cards of your deck and put one of them into your hand. Okay, that's kind of whatever. Um, why not just look at the bottom eight cards of your deck? Why do you have to flip a coin? I think that's dumb. I think this is a bad card. Um, and I don't even know who these dudes are. So I don't know why this card got made. <laughs> energy retrieval, energy search, energy switch. Friends in Hisui! Ah, uh, look at them! Ah! And it's a Kirisaki art. And, you know, Kirisaki isn't necessarily the best artist in the TCG, but anytime. But, but, but for some reason, they were assigned all of my favorite characters. Like, 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 the, 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 Kirisaki drew Marnie, she drew Irida, she drew Valo, she drew Rosa, she drew, uh, I think she has an Ace Rola, uh, she has a, she drew Lano and Mala, it's like all of the best supporters are drawn by Kirisaki for some reason, or the, the, the best character, uh, who get supporter cards are drawn by Kirisaki for some reason. And now you got friends in Hisui. And I love his I love the I love Hisui so much. I love Legends Arceus. I love this card. Look at my look at my goats. Ah, uh, they're all so happy. They're all being friends. I love it. It's so nice. Friends in Sinnoh. Pretty cool. I'm not sure why Volkner is there. Volkner is not a very significant character in Diamond and Pearl. Um, but, alright, I guess. Not a bad- I guess, they just needed a fifth- a fifth member somewhere. I would have honestly had Crasher Wake, he's more important to the plot, I think. But whatever. Alright, Great Ball. I don't know why I paused there, I, I forgot it's a reprint. Hop! There's a new Hop card. Alright, or, you know, it's a new Hop illustration, rather, but, alright. I actually like that autograph a lot. It actually kind of looks like it's trying to say hop. So that's cool. Leon! Oh, I like that. He's giving... He, he's putting his hat on his bro. Oh, that's cute. That's fun. Lost Vacuum. Is that a new Lost Vacuum mark? Nah, I don't think it is. Nessa. Oh, man. Oh, Nessa with the drip. In a nice, fancy, bougie restaurant. Because Nessa gets paid. I don't know where I was going with that joke, honestly, but that is a beautiful looking card because Nessa is a beautiful looking character. Can't miss with Nessa. Alright, uh, this, this stuff. Ooh, look at that. Raihan. Another really awesome looking character. Can't miss with this guy. Um, and I like the flag on there. I like it. Pretty cool. Um, I don't know if I... Uh, I, I was thinking about the full art, Raihan, or whatever. Uh, I'm just gonna, whatever. Forget I thought about anything. Forget that I had thoughts. Oh, that's definitely a new rescue carrier, isn't it? Yeah, that's cute. I like it. It kind of looks like a little toy, and it's and it kind of makes sense because you're rescuing little Pokemon, Pokemon with 90 HP or less. That's fun. All right, Sky Steel Sown. I forgot what this does. It's, it does something stupid. Once in your turn, you may use this ability. During your turn, as your opponent's active Pokemon V-Star or active Pokemon V-Max is knocked out by a damage from an attack from your basic Pokemon V, take one more prize card. That's what it does. It's interesting. I'm not sure how often it's going to be used, though. Like, how many basic Pokemon V are getting used, aside from Vikavolt? Like, this will be really... This makes Vikavolt decks better, but that's about it. Maybe Zashi and V will be played for the extremely brief time that it's still legal, which is, you know, two months. <laughs> um, I don't know. Interesting card, though. Uh, Switch. Trekking Shoes. Yeah, they've got, like, new illustrations for, uh, by a melee cart. That's fun. Oh, I love that. <laughs> the old, the, the, the silly-looking Ultra Ball. Yeah. 
All right, now we're in alt art territory. Alessa's Sparkle. Look at that. That is just wonderful. I like that not only. I like that they, they basically went with the exact opposite of the original Alessa Sparkle. Because the original Alessa Sparkle is really dynamic looking. It, it's. I cannot type today. I'm, I have my legs crossed, so I'm not in a typing position. But yeah. And I think this is a really, really cool card for what it's worth. I, well, I hate the card. I hate Fusion Strike. But I think the card looks really, really cool. You know, it's a really cool pose. It's awesome. I like the light swirling around her. I like the city behind her and all that. Um, and then you've got her just kind of relaxing somewhere. Just kind of chilling. And she's in her alternate outfit that she wears in black too. Uh, whereas the first one is her black one outfit. I like that a lot. I like the, the completely different approach that they took with this to kind of give us a new variation, you know, a different option, as opposed to, you know, uh, do you want Duraludon facing 30 degrees away from you or 20 degrees away from you? That kind of crap. <coughs> Friends and Hisui! Ah! Unfortunately, not drawn by Kirisaki. Surprised by that. But... I love my friends in Hisui. I hope I get this card. Um, yeah. Just absolutely wonderful. I love it. Friends in Sinnoh. Oh, man. This one's awesome. Again, I don't know why Volker is on here. <laughs> are, are Volker and Cynthia married or something? Is that the implication? I don't know, but uh, I, I hope. That would be cool. Um, but I actually like this a one a lot. This one's like, all right. But this one actually looks like they're all hanging out and, like, doing something. They're out in the town. I love the light reflecting off of them. Um, you know, it's like the, the kids are all being silly, rowdy kids. And then the adults above are just like, ah, ha, ha. Look at these silly, silly kids. Silly little children. Ha, ha. And that's a lot of fun. It really says a lot. That's awesome. Great illustration. Oh, there's a full art Professor Rowan. It's okay. I guess I have no strong feelings about this. Honestly, actually, wait. I wonder if this is intentional. The 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 background looks weird, and it's Sonosuke. So like Sonosuke will do. Or is it, wait, have I? I've been saying Sonosuke. Is it actually Sanosuke? I'm sorry for mispronouncing that. I'll just say Sakuma. I'll just say Sakuma from now on. So anyway, Sakuma does way more detailed backgrounds than this. But I think he actually made it look like the DS game? Like, this looks like DS graphics <laughs> in the back. That's actually, that's actually kind of galaxy brain. Like, like, like the houses look really low poly. Like, they don't have much texture to them. If that was intentional, that is insane. And S Sakuma really is the absolute best artist. <laughs> <laughs> in this DCG, even though I said Akira Igawa was the best one. I can't decide. There are so many great artists in this game. Um, so yeah, I was about to say, like, Professor Rowan doesn't look like he fits the background at all. But the, that is really loud. Sorry if the background music has been, like, really loud. I can't really tell. I've just been playing... I've been playing uh, music from fan-made Pokemon games. So I don't even know what in the hell these are. <laughs> so whatever. Um, but anyway, okay. I'll move on with the rest of Rowan. And then another follow. Um, <laughs> I like... You know, honestly, this should have been the original Volo illustration. I like the original Volo a lot. I think it's a cool-looking card. But honestly... This actually, like, low-key spoiled me on something in the game. And I know it's my fault. Like, this came out, like, six months after the game came out. So, it, you know, it's my fault for being so slow at finishing Legend Arceus. But, like, I never saw Volo in his outfit like this. So I had no idea that was, like, a thing. And then I saw this card, and I was like, w w wait, what? <laughs> what do you mean? Um, so, yeah, I was l a little bit bummed about the spoiler there. But here you've actually got him in his regular unassuming outfit before he becomes a bad guy and I think that's what they should have done in the first place 
Um, and then, you know, this card should have been in Crown Zenith instead. It's like they got swapped around for some reason. So, yeah, I don't really have much of a preference. I think I like this one better because it just looks cooler. And it's, you know, such a great moment in the game. But this one looks alright. So, yeah. And then energy. Energy cards. Alright, now we are... Oh, this is... It's, okay, never mind. That's a secret rare. Oh. Oh, man. How rare is this card going to be? Wait, that's interesting. Okay, so we're going to get into the... the, the what, what do you call it? Galarian Gallery, I guess? Um, but first, we've got this secret rare Pikachu. Like, I knew this card existed, but I didn't know it was a secret rare like that. Interesting. Uh, it's Pikachu with a bunch of... It's like all the defining... Um, Pokemon of the Sword and Shield era. You got Shadow Rider, Calyrex, VMAX. Uh, I don't know which Urshifu it is. I'm going to assume Rapid Strike Urshifu because that was the better one. Uh, you got Hisuian Zoroark. Although I don't know if Hisuian Zoroark was really all that like relevant. Maybe they made this when Lost Origin had like just come out and Hisuian Zoroark was really, really strong. Because you know they may as well have Lugia on here, but Lugia is not on here. Lugia is like the strongest V-Star right now. Or they may as well have had Arceus. Arceus is actually the strongest V-Star. I don't know. But Crobat V's there. Zashin V's there. We've also got a Gudra V-Star there. And Intellion. Yeah. Like a bunch of the definitive Pokemon cards. Or at least the Pokemon of those Pokemon cards that really define the Sword and Shield era. Pretty cool. Really interesting concept for a uh, Pokemon card like that. For a Pikachu. And, uh, yeah, I like the way they were able to fit all these Pokemon onto here, but still have Pikachu be, like, the, the, the central figure there. Pretty cool art. I like it a lot. <laughs> Alright, now we've got, we are in the Galarian Gallery, the 70, uh, art rare cards, basically. And we've got the, uh, the Hisuian Voltorb. It's pretty nice. I like the little, I like the quaint style to it. The very, uh... <laughs> mellow painterly style Voltorb just sleeping next to a tree looks like a bunch of apricorns fell onto it or are around it pretty cool very quiet image very nice oh I love this oh I love I don't think I've seen all of these just yet but oh man I, I don't think I've seen this one before this is so good oh I love that Cricketune singing to a bunch of Pokemon in a park I love it when artists draw other Pokemon in the illustration. You know, like it's not, like they uh, like obviously the central figure is supposed to be you know the card written on top or the, the Pokemon written on top. But I like it when they have more Pokemon in the back, like so that they're you know interacting with the world around them a lot more. And that's exactly what this does. Like you've got some Pokemon sleeping. You know, Kamala, I mean, Kamala's always sleeping, but you've got the Wulu and the Emolga on top of it. We've also got some Emolga flying around. Some more Wulu back there. A couple Stuffle playing around. you got some Shroomish dancing. We're just really enjoying the music. Maybe they're uh, starting a little mosh pit in there. Uh, and then you got some Bunnelby, who look like they're just joining the party, checking it out. you got a Pawn down here with a couple Lotad. Snom facing it. This is just such a nice art. This is so nice. I love this a lot. I really, really love this. I hope I get this card. If not, I'm going to buy singles of it. Just wish it didn't have a stupid yellow border. They got rid of those 10 years too late. <laughs> Mag Mortar. You know, I'm going to be honest. I like the illustration, but what is stopping someone from just writing Electivire on top? Like, it's, it's, it's actually hard to tell that Magmortar is really the central figure here. I guess, kind of, like, 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 it's a little bit bigger on the, on the card than Electivire is, and it's the one lighting the fire, so I guess it's doing something. You know, it's the one taking action in the card. So I, I, I get it. Even still, it looks maybe a little too unfocused. It's a nice art, though. It's, it's a nice art. This is just a dumb nitpick. It's nice. Oh, wow. What is this? Man, this is... This is strange. But I am totally into it. 
It's like, this is what's so cool about full art rare cards like this. Like, this card, I don't think this card would have worked at all if it was just a regular rare or just a regular art card. Like, if it just had to be scrunched into, a like, a border of this size, like, it wouldn't have worked as well. But here, you really get to see the entire background and just everything that's going on. You got an Oracorio dancing in front of a couple other Oracorio. Looks like they're enjoying it. Just looks awesome. It's so weird and unique. Like, it's like the back, like, the wall behind it is just so strange and abstract. But it really fits into the the style with the the white outline and like the, the the like what do you even call this it looks like there are just a bunch of really individual scratches and strokes to uh the oricorio it's really odd but awesome it's awesome i love this card lapras again really nice card with a bunch of stuff in the back manti and mantike finian and Wishy Washy almost said Luminian. I don't think I like this as much as quite. Oh, there is also. Wait. I'm actually not entirely sure if they're above water or not. Because it doesn't look like the water is all that deep. It almost looks like Lapras is washing up on the shore and then there's a wave behind them. But then you see the Pelipper and Wingle flying above them. Huh. I think the wave kind of throws us off here. It's actually a little bit strange. You know what? I'm going to be honest. I don't love this one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't love this one. It's all, it's all right, though. It, it looks nice, and I like all the Pokemon on it. I just think the background's a little confusing. The environment's a little confusing. Also, you can kind of, uh, like, it looks like there's light shining down onto it, but you can't actually see the sun. It looks like it's, this, it looks like these clouds would be covering the sun. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm just overthinking it and being a dummy. A Manaphy. This is a nice Manaphy. It's kind of poking out of the water, but you can see the water below it. Like, you can see how deep the water is. See, there's, there's a lot of depth to this image. Oh, I just now realized. I thought this was just like a shot. Actually, yeah, I thought this was like a really deep cave. I actually don't think that is what's going on, but you can see this huge wishy-washy. I just now realized that's what that is. I thought this was like a shadow. Or, like, a, a, a cave. Oh, that's really cool. That just blends in so well. It's awesome. And you got all the other... You got the Bruxish flying around. And you got the, the Picky Peck. That looks like it's about to peck its little antenna. Oh, the Puky Muku. I just noticed. And the and the Toxapex. Wow, there is so much into this. And there's a Wind Pod in the corner there. I think there's something else right here. I don't really know what. But yeah, there's a, lot, there's a lot going on in here. I like this. This one, this one's nice. Whoa. Whoa, look at this. Keldeo dancing on the water under an aurora, which is also reflected into the water. Just look how much is going on in this. <coughs> I will say, though, the Keldeo itself looks like a CG plastic toy. And that is a little bit dis disappointing. But the environment looks amazing. The sky looks fantastic. It looks beautiful. And I love the way it's reflected in the water like this. Including these trees. The aurora itself. Keldeo in the water. And then you got these trees on the side. Just to kind of give the image a little more depth. That's nice. So yeah, I don't love the Keldeo itself. But they really saved it with the, the rest of the image, honestly. Which is another cool thing about uh, the art rares. It's not really... A, it, it isn't always about the Pokemon itself. <laughs> Electivire. See, this one, I can tell this one's actually about Electivire because Electivire is in the middle of the image. It's actually in the, in the center and it's getting struck by lightning for some reason. But it's like, yo, what's the matter? What's wrong, Magmortar? You look a little scared. <laughs> and Magmortar's like, dude, are you okay? <laughs> you just got struck by freaking lightning. But he's fine. In fact, his speed is going to get raised because of its motor drive ability. But yeah, I like it. It's nice. They're just hanging out. And uh, yeah, it gets struck by lightning every now and then. It happens. It's cool. I like the I like how consistent the background is with the style of the uh, of how the Pokemon are drawn. So that's nice. 
Oh, this is my favorite one. This is my favorite one because this is exactly what I want. This is what I've always wanted from a Toxtricity illustration. I want Toxtricity playing in a punk band. That is all I've ever wanted from Pokemon. To, to give me Toxtricity in a punk band. You've got the Obstagoon singer or whatever it's supposed to do. Maybe it's just a bouncer who just runs the venue. And then Rillaboom drummer. I want a Pokemon band. That is the coolest thing. This is awesome. I love the trippy purple yellow floor which I, I love it because this is both a trippy design that looks like it would work in some kind of like niche hippie dive bar or whatever like some niche venue for weird underground bands like that just works but it's purple and electric because toxicity is purple and electric because i said i keep saying purple and electric i meant purple and yellow toxicity is purple and yellow because it's po it's poison and electric that's just awesome yeah, I love the I love this background. I love this. Actually, it looks like a whole a whole a whole stage. It's got the lights above. Yeah, this is just great. This is so great. This is so freaking cool. I love this. This this card's beautiful. This is my favorite. My favorite GG. Mew, man. Look at how nice this looks. See, this really, this really sells how mystifying Mew looks. Mew is supposed to be this super rare Pokemon that no one knows about. And then here it is, sitting in the forest, taking a nap after having a little snack. And all these Pokemon that live in the forest are just kind of like creeping up on it like, what in the world is this? What is this guy? Where did it come from? Never seen it before. They're all just so fascinated. There's even Aracuda under... There's a little creek here. Oh, man. So many Pokemon. Nidoran, both genders. Cramorant, Cutiefly, Rookity, Ponyta, Squovit. I love it. This is such a nice image. So cool. But, you know, Mew is still in the center of the image. You can easily tell. <laughs> it's great. It's awesome. I, I love this so much. You know, I play Mew in some... Wow. Okay, first of all. I, I, I was going to say, I play Mew in a few decks, and I can't wait to have this in those decks. Um, Lunatone. Wow. This is awesome. This looks like it comes straight out of a storybook. Like, look at it. I like that it's kind of partially buried in the dirt. Like, it's just, like it's just stuck there, and it's just kind of like, hey... <laughs> Hey, can, you, can you guys help me out? I'm supposed to have levitate, but I ran into something with mold breaker or something. So now I'm just stuck here like an idiot. Um, but like the, just the like the way this whole ill is th this whole background is drawn. Like all the all the plants, the flowers, the moon in such a soft color, but just illuminating everything. Literally, because there's Illum Illumise, ha 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 ha. It's so nice. Like, there's just something so wonderful and touching about this illustration. I love this. That is so nice. Whoa! Deoxys! Huh, wait. <laughs> oh! Oh, this is so cool! Okay, I get what's going on here. It's all of the special strike items. So you've got, like, the, the, the rapid strike scroll, the single strike scroll, the single strike urn that recycles your single strike energy, the welcoming lantern that I don't remember what that does, but it does something, uh, the echoing horn, that, which is a rapid strike item, the cross transceiver, which is a fusion strike item, uh, other things, I think that's cross switcher or something, whatever, fan of waves is on there, oh, that's genius, that's so smart, at first I was about to say, like, why did this Deoxys that, like, never gets played get an art rare, but then I realized it's because of, to show off all the different items it can use, because it's fusion strike, single strike, and rapid strike, so it fits into all these archetypes, and here are all the gimmick items from that archetype, from all three archetypes, 
That's funny. I like that. That's such a cool idea. Yeah. Okay, so this is by Haruko Ichikawa. This is the 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 author and illustrator of Land of the Lustrous. This is a famous manga creator. And while they're busy not making Land of the Lustrous, they had time to make this absolutely stellar Diancy. Like, easily the best artistic rendition of Diancy ever. Because it's literally by the creator of the Gemstone manga. Uh, it, it doesn't get any better than that. Like, that is just so genius. And this looks absolutely fantastic. So freaking cool. Just so cool to see, like, a famous creator in the Pokemon TCG like that. Even if, it is, even if this is just a one-off, which it probably is. But that's just awesome. That's just so awesome. Alright, Comfy has a... Uh, Nice alt art. Um, although, honestly, not too interesting if I, if I, if I'm gonna be honest. Like, it just, it's, it's comfy. It just looks like a big illustration of comfy. Um, kind of weirdly cropped, too. Like, it just looks like it's low in the image and there's not really too much going on in it. Yeah. Honestly, not enthusiastic about this, but, you know, if I ever play Lost Box, I will have four of this to play with. All right, here's Soul Rock, which kind of looks like they were going for the same thing as the Lunatone, but although I do really like how detailed these these flowers and plants are on the bottom, like I do actually like this. I do like it. I just like the 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 Lunatone more. Lunatone looks better because I just love that storybook look to it. But this one also looks nice. It does look really, really nice. Although I'm not entirely sure where it is. Like the, it kind of looks like it's out in space somewhere, honestly. But then you got this nice little uh, land with a mountain in the back. But still, I, I like this art a lot. I just like this the the Lunatone a little bit better. But I do like that they. I wonder if that was intentional. Like I wonder if both of these artists like collaborated on their ideas. Like they got together and said, "Hey, let's do Soul Rock and Lunatone." Both with Volbeat and Illumise, and both of the rocks are kind of, like, stuck in the ground. Or if that was just a totally accidental thing, but I think it's funny. Anyway. Absol! So once again, Absol. Absol's one of my favorite Pokemon ever. Um, this looks awesome. It looks great. Uh, Absol's the, the, the disaster Pokemon, so I like that it's, it looks all stormy in the back. Like a tornado is about to ravage this land, which actually looks very nice and beautiful. Although there's also, like, maybe a little, a little lone ray of sunlight beaming down on it. So maybe it's not all terrible for this Pokemon. But hard to miss with Absol, because Absol just looks so freaking cool. Whoa! Whoa! Look at this! Look how stark this looks! Oh, this is awesome! Feeble! Starring in its own spy thriller. Its own TV drama. It's so dramatic. The stark light casting on it. With the, the, the very few different tones of colors on it. I like it. I really love this style. Like, that is just such a perfect style for this Pokemon. That's awesome. Magnezone. Magnezone. <laughs> I don't know what it's doing. It's working at a factory making pyramids, I guess. <laughs> but it's working hard. It's earning its paycheck along with some other Magnemite and a Magneton there. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know what's going on in the background, but it, it it's weird and sci-fi and that's all I can really ask for from this Pokemon. So they, they understood the assignment. Good job. Love the art. Oh, Asako Ito! This is the, uh, the, 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 the knitted figure artist. Oh, th I, that's awesome that they got one of their, uh, that's awesome that they got to do a, an art rare. I love it. So they, so you get to see them, it looks like they're in a dollhouse. <laughs> it's a doll in a dollhouse! Yeah! This is great. And I love that it's this Altaria with Tempting Tune. 
<coughs> excuse me, because we have a character rare of the other Altaria that moves damage counters. I play Superior V-Star sometimes just for fun, and it plays both Altaria. It plays one copy of this and three copies of the other Altaria. So I love that this Altaria now has an art rare. So I can basically have a, a maximum rare deck where all of the Pokemon have really, really cool illustrations. Except, I guess, Swablu, unfortunately. Uh, and I guess if Superior V-Star doesn't have a cool art rare in this, that would be another one. Oh, well, but the, those... those those Superior V with the Rosa. Pretty cool. Alright, here's Latias. Latias flying through a neighborhood, stealing someone's laundry on accident. Come on, Latias, look in front of you. How how could you not see the the clotheslines right in front of you? Why did you fly right into the clotheslines? You can fly. You can literally fly. You could have gone well above them. But instead, you decided to go through them. What a big jerk. Oh, I don't like Latias. Latias is rude. Latias is going to mess up your laundry. I don't appreciate that. I like it, though. <laughs> I'm not trying to, like, make fun of this art. It's, it's a nice art. Hisuian Gudra. Aw. It's just laying down, and... So, it looks like a Starly's eating some plants above it. That's funny. It kind of looks like it might be mildly annoyed by that, but it's not going to do anything about it. It's cool. I love Hisui and Gudra. It's cute. But yeah. Oh, wait! <laughs> that's a good one! Oh, that's really good! It's Ditto! But it's not... <laughs> you know, I especially love this because... There's an old Ditto that I have in person where it's Nummel. Like... Isn't that a thing? Maybe I'm wrong. Oh, no. Uh, sorry, I was thinking of something else. The reason why it's Nummel is because you... Because in the Pokemon Go set... You, you get a Nummel, but you peel it off, and there's the Ditto underneath. That's how it works. That's funny. Um, <laughs> yeah, that, that's funny. Um, I don't know. I, I thought there was a Nummel in, like, the Ruby Sapphire era, but it's, it was actually... Like, it was a Ditto, but it was modeled after a Nummel. I must have been thinking about something else. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being dumb. But that is really, really funny. How... They made a Ditto art rare where Ditto is just the other Pokemon, but it's got the Ditto phase. That's such a fun take on it. And I love that they got Miki Tanaka to do it. Miki Tanaka is, Miki Tanaka's really simple style just works so well. But I love all the all the Nummel grazing around, but one of them is not like the others. Great art. Oh, oh, Dunsparce. Oh, look at the cute Dunsparce. I love that I can't tell which Dunsparce is real or if they're all real. I don't know if one Dunsparce is a toy, if, or if, like, all, like, three of the Dunsparce are a toy and one of them's real, or if they're all just real Dunsparce. Because, look, you've got a, a toy Omastar in the back, so it's not completely out of the question, right? And a toy Aerodactyl there. Where's the toy Kabutops? There has to be a Kabutops somewhere. There has to be a Kabutops somewhere. How are you going to have Omastar and Aerodactyl and not Kabutops? I cannot see it. Are you kidding me? Uh, look, 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 there's a, there's a little drawing up there. There's a drawing up there, a stick figure with a Dunsparce. Someone just really, really loves Dunsparce. Maybe it's this artist, Karata So. Dunsparce is their favorite Pokemon. And they were like, please let me draw that Dunsparce art rare. In any case, I think this is absolutely adorable. It's 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 great. Mill tank. Oh, that's not, wow. It is a a nice Thanksgiving feast on the farm. Looks absolutely delicious. Awesome. I love that. That's so fun. It's so comfy, and there's so much detail into it as well. It looks just so. You just you just want to eat. You just want to eat that pie right there in front of you. You just want to. Eat that soup right there. 
I like it. That's cool. Biberel. This is by the artist who did those uh, funny alt arts for the items. So this is fun. That's a cute art. I like it a lot. <laughs> Riolu by Koki Saito. I'm going to be honest, I don't care for this one all that much. I'm sorry, Koki Saito. It's just, it's just like a, it's just a Riolu jumping out of a tree. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be honest, this one's actually kind of boring. Oh, and... Oh my goodness, Koki Saito has a lot of art rares, actually. So cool that Swablu has one, because I need that for my deck with the Altaria in them. Oh, wait, is this why... How many of them are there? Wow. Hmm. Alright, well, I guess I'll go back. Um, yeah, I'm not a fan of the Riolu. Um, the Swab Blue's alright. It, it's just alright. Uh, this one I kind of like. Because it's coming out of the trees in a cool way. Looks like it's all it's all spooky. Uh, Bidoof. Wait, we already have a... Don't we already have a Bidoof? Rare. Alt rare. I guess we have two of them. Where's Bidoof? I thought we had one. Am I wrong? Am I, am I going crazy? Am I stupid? Oh, I thought we had a, a, a Bidoof art rare already. I'm just like, oh, there's two of them, I guess. <laughs> Okay, well that's fine. And I, and I, I don't, what am I gonna do? Complain about having too many art rares? Get real. Um, actually, this one's nice because the background, the environment looks a lot more detailed. Um, this one's cool. I like the Pikachu flying on a big leaf, and then Turtle Twig. Okay, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Okay, I think I'm starting to realize something. These, these all form one image, don't they? I think I, I'm i misunderstanding what the intention of this is. These aren't just a bunch of random cards drawn by Koki Saito. They form one image. You need to collect the entire set. So I imagine Pikachu is like in the middle and then they're all like watching it. They're all just like, yo, what's going on? Look at Pikachu. It's going all crazy. Riding in the wind on a leaf like that. Because you can see the same leaf blowing around on all these other... Okay. On all the other cards. All the other illustrations. Okay, so there's a lot more to it than I was uh, giving it credit for. And you know what? It's cool because... These cards all have art rares already. Although I don't actually know if... Does the card rare have an art rare? Lucario doesn't have an art rare. I don't think. It doesn't look like it. Huh. Interesting. Although you would think it would because it's Lucario. But, in any case, Altaria has a character rare and an art rare in this set. Dusclops. Wait, Dusclops doesn't have an art rare either. Oh, uh, I was totally wrong. I was thinking that all of these cards in this set have evolutions that have art rares. I mean, b Roll does. Yeah, Tor Tor Tortwig does. Yeah, Torterra doesn't have one. I think Parasect does. I definitely knew... Po I thought so because Mighty Yenna and Flaffy have art rares. Or character rares. So I thought that all the other ones did. Like the evolutions of these Pokemon. I was totally wrong. Alright, just ignore that. Ignore that. Okay. So, okay. These cards don't look all that impressive individually, but it's not that's not the point. You have to put them all together to get the full image. And I bet that probably looks a lot cooler. Okay, so that's that will be interesting to see. Alright, now we are in the uh the super special cards. Leafeon V Star. This is just absolutely magnificent. This is just one of the most beautiful Pokemon cards ever printed. Like, it's in such a detailed environment. Like, there's so much going on in this greenhouse. It, but it dipping its tail into the water, which just looks so nice. Like, the water kind of looks golden and it's sparkling. And it's just awesome. And Leafeon is just such a cool-looking Pokemon. It looks like a very wonderful, very quiet-looking Pokemon. Very peaceful-looking. And I love that they gave it an illustration that really reflects that. Just, I love this so much. I, I just really, really love this. 
absolutely wonderful. Uh, Entei V. I'm going to be honest, I don't like this one. Like, I don't know. There's something about it that just looks strange to me. Like, I just don't like the way Entei is drawn. I don't like the way it's put onto the background. Um, and the background itself doesn't look all that great. So, yeah, honestly, not really feeling that one. Simisir V Star. <laughs> See, you know, like I said a while back, the Simisir V seems like a practical joke, and it must have been because they gave they gave the V Star art rare a, a a joke art basically. Like it just looks all it just looks ridiculous. It looks dumb. It looks silly. It's drawn in such a a, a ridiculous style. It looks like a parody, and I love that. I love that about it. That's great. Um. So yeah, cool, cool art, cool art. Honestly, I appreciate it a lot. That looks fantastic. This is great. Just Suicune walking on top of a glacier. The starry background above it just looks fantastic. Just what can I say? It just looks awesome. Yeah, it's just great. Super cool. Oh, that's wonderful. This is great. And, man, Luminian V already has a great alternate art rare. Um, but this is... I don't... Do I like this above the original one? Like, like this one's really good. Like, that is just so nice. Like, that is as good as it could have possibly been. But... There's also, like, a really... The, the way this one's drawn, it's, like, a totally different style, but just equally fantastic. I don't know which one I like more! Uh, I'm gonna start playing two Luminian V in my decks so I can have both of them at the same time so that I don't have to choose! <laughs> it's gonna be so hard to choose! Yeah, love it a lot. All right, Glaceon V-Star. Um... Yeah, you know what? I don't really like this one either. It, it It's just Glaceon standing in the snow. Like, honestly, this is kind of boring. There's nothing really exciting about it. I mean, look, it's better than the regular V-Star art, so it's definitely an improvement. And I appreciate it for that, but... Just nothing really uh, stands out about it. It's just whatever. I mean, look. This is, the, this is Glaceon's counterpart, Levion. That's the art that that Leafeon got. Okay, look how much is going on in this. Just look at this freaking image. And then look at Glaceon, its counterpart. Its Ice-type counterpart. The other evolution introduced in Gen 4. I, I, I feel like it got a little bit slighted. But, again, still better than the original V-Star artwork. So, I will take it. Raikou V. I like this a lot. See, this is how you can make a Pokemon that doesn't look like it's on top of a background at all, but still make it look really cool. It actually does look like it is on some kind of background. It's just blurred so heavily because Raikou is like the fastest Pokemon ever. So it's just running so quickly that the background like doesn't exist anymore. It's moving as fast as light. It's got lightning, excuse me, coming out of it because it's so fast and lightning-y. That's cool. This is a cool art. Zera Aura VMAX. Wow. That is a very interesting take on VMAX. <laughs> like, like usually VMAX cards are drawn to be, like, really powerful looking. And in this one, you just got a Pachirisu sleeping in. Oh, wait. There's actually more Pokemon sleeping on top of it. You got a Tokidemaru over there. You've got an Imolga there. Is there going to be, like, a uh, Dedene somewhere? I feel like there should be. Kind of weird that there isn't, honestly. Maybe they just didn't think about it. You know what? I don't like Dedene either, so I appreciate them excluding it. That's an interesting art. I like it. I like it. it, it it's different. And a lot better than the other <laughs> Zera Aura V Max art in this set. Zera Aura V Star. What is going on here? It looks like it, uh... It's like uh, Roxas in Kingdom Hearts 2 smashing up all those monitors, except it's happy about it. It's very happy that it destroyed this 
secret lab or whatever this place is. Very interesting. I like it. Pretty cool. Man. Is this by this, this? This has to be by the same person who drew the Charizard V Star. It almost looks like it's a kind of like a continuation of that. Yeah, because Charizard V Star, um, the alt art, it, it's fighting Mewtwo. So now you got Mewtwo V Star fighting Charizard. That is super cool. See, I don't know why we couldn't have alt arts of uh, V Star cards sooner, like. Like here, the, the, the gold swirl actually looks like it's kind of part of the, the image. It looks like it's like Mewtwo's charging up an attack infused with the V-Star power. And that's really cool. I like that a lot. There's actually more Pokemon in the back. There's a Tangrowth all the way back there. There's probably more, but I can't quite tell. But yeah, really cool card. Love it a lot. Oh, okay. This is the best art. This is the best card in the set. This is the best art in the entire set. The best card. This is what this is what kids dream of of Pokemon cards looking like. Like this is what people have wanted a Deoxys illustration to look like forever. Cuz Deoxys is the alien Pokemon. So finally we get a UFO Pokemon that's taking Deoxys back to base or whatever. It's going to beam him up. I love this so much. Just conceptually, it's so cool. And it's executed perfectly. It looks fantastic. I love the, the huge, colorful planet in the back. But it's also got, like, this glitch filter on top of it. So I don't really know if this is, like, a real thing or not. Like, it, it like it's so... It's so extraterrestrial that you don't even perceive it properly. Like, is this the real world or is it not? How can we even tell? I actually, like, honestly... Weird tangent, but I actually believe in, like, aliens and extraterrestrial life and all that. I just think that they're impossible to perceive, at least with how humans are now. Like, we just can't even, like, understand their existence. And so, I feel like the way that the background is all, like, glitched and warping and distorting, I feel like it kind of plays into that concept, where... Yeah, these extraterrestrial beings, they exist. You just can't really tell because they're on a different plane of existence. Maybe that's thinking about it too deeply. I'm just trying to say I love this art so much. I am absolutely going to chase after this card. Whoa! What is this? Deoxys V-Star. Interesting. I can't really tell what's going on, though. Like, to be completely honest, I have no idea what it is doing. I guess it's flying somewhere. But, like, from where? From what? Yeah, I don't know. I guess it looks kind of cool. And, you know, if I ever play a Deoxys V-Star deck, I'll play this card and not the uh, regular Deoxys V-Star. But I'm not really sure what's going on in this image, so I'm not crazy about it. Hatterene V-Max. Um... I don't get it. This is actually really weird. It's not even facing you. It's actually like it's actually turned away from the camera and chasing after this beam of light over there. Um, I, yeah, I I don't like it. I'm gonna be honest. This is kind of this is pretty disappointing. Like Hatterene, Gigantamax Hatterene was the last Gigantamax form to be. Um, portrayed in the trading card game. And they fi finally, in the very last Sword and Shield set, they gave us H Gigantamax Hatterene. And this is... And you can't even see it because it's facing away from the camera. I I don't like it, honestly. Pretty disappointing art. Alright. Zacian V. You know, we've had so many Zacian V arts that it's cool to just get one that looks kind of simple like this even though it has a very detailed background there's a lot lot of lines 
Although, I'm not entirely sure what all the swirls are about. Yeah, actually, I'm not entirely sure what's going on with this background. There are lots of swirls. There's a swirl up here, but it actually looks like it's part of this arch. Like, it's part of the architecture. But, I'm not sure what else is... going on. Maybe there's something I'm missing. But, eh, I'm not crazy about it, actually. Although, it's kind of cool. <laughs> yes! Yes! A Yuka Mo Man, that is crazy. They gave Yuka Mori a V. And you know what? It's the best V. Because it's the it's the Mew killer. So imagine. Imagine playing Fusion Strike and you're feeling so cool because you're like going first or second, you already got a VIP pass, you flipped heads on Crammermatic, you know, you've got all your you've got all your um you've got all of your Genesect using all their uh engine abilities, whatever. I don't even know what it's called. <laughs> I'm so dumb. I forgot what it's called because I, because every time I play Fusion Strike, I just tab out and and look back at the screen five minutes later to see if my opponent has ended their turn or not. It's freaking boring. And uh, but yeah, imagine you know they go through all these steps to get their board set up so perfectly, so meticulously, and then you just drop down the clay drapian V. <laughs> <laughs> the clay figure drop in and just one shot the Mew V Max and just erase it. Just ruin all of their hard work by such a silly, silly looking card. I cannot wait to do that to people. I love this so much. <laughs> I love it. And, and, and the Scorpi along with them. <laughs> For good measure. This is so nice. I love Yuka Mori so much. I'm so glad that they got a special art for a Pokemon V. You know, because Pokemon V usually are supposed to look so serious because, you know, they're the strong power cards. And here's the, the Yuka Mori clay figure killing Mew V Maxes left and right. I love it. Alright, Darkrai V Star. This is interesting. What is this box? in the back. There must be something that I'm missing about that, because I'm sure that's there for a reason. But this is interesting. Um, Darkrai out. It kind of looks like it's out on a full moon, although honestly, the sky itself looks bright. It almost looks like the sky... It almost looks like it's sunset, like it's dusk, with this, you know, yellow streak. Oh, I guess this is because it's a V-star, so it has to have the gold... Aura. Oh, okay. Okay, that's what this is. Okay, I misunderstood that at first. Um, you know, the style is kind of cool. I'm not crazy about it. Um, yeah, I don't know what it is. I'm just not, like, super crazy about it. But it's it's unique, so I appreciate it for that. And, you know, like, like the other V-Stars, I will use it because it's better looking than the, uh, the, the normal V-Star. For sure. I, I will accept that. So yeah, just not crazy about it. Ooh, cool, the uh, the starters, the Hisuian starters get alt arts, I'm glad. All right, Hisuian Samurat V. Dipping its toes in the water. You know what, that's really cool because, well, uh, okay, so I thought, my train of thought was that I thought they did that to reference original Samurai being a water type because I forgot that Hisuian Samurai is a water type because I just was focused on the darkness type uh, as the card. I thought it was like dark and fighting for some reason, but no, that makes sense. Okay, the, the water isn't all that special, but you know what? It looks nice. The environment's nice. I like the, the fall leaves, Mount Coronet in the back, uh, reflected in the water like that. It's cool. Nice card. Hisuian Samurai V Star. Whoa. Now this is cool. It's gonna mess up that snow runt. This snow runt is dead. It is 1000% getting merciless bladed for 220. Absolutely. It's it's just gone. Mooncleave Star plus Merciless Blade. Right here. That's what it's that's what it's doing. 
I love that dark aura coming off of it. But also just the way the, the background is filtered red, so you can just tell it's 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 full of violent rage. This is not a this is not gonna be a pretty scene. And then you have the moon on the bottom like that. That is cool. I love that. Hoopa V! Hoopa! Reveling in some riches that it found. It's in the uh, the Cave of Wonders. It's in the treasure room. It's swimming in gold, and it's so excited, so happy. You know, that's cool because, you know, this is based off of Ada Jin, right? So it's based off of, like, an Egyptian demon or something like that. So I guess this is, like, Egyptian, ancient Egyptian treasure or something. Yeah, that's cool. Like, I, like, I, like I'm watching a scene in Il an Aladdin. That's what it feels like. This is nice. Really cool. Wait. Aladdin isn't Egyptian. I'm... I'm stupid as hell. Oh my god, I can't believe I said that. I'm so dumb. Jeez. Jeez. I need to take a history class or something. Instead of playing Pokemon all the time. I'm sorry, I don't know world history. I just know Pokemon history. I can tell you all about Hisui. It's a great place. Zamazen... I screwed up. Zamazen TV. It looked nice. When I, uh, saw it. For, like, five seconds. Zamazenta V. It's got a very, very colorful background. It's very magenta and purple. Interesting. I'm not entirely sure where it's supposed to be. But it looks interesting. I'm not crazy about it, because it just kind of looks... Like, it looks colorful and detailed, but f for what? Like, what does it have to do with Zamazenta? Where is Zamazenta? Where is he going? What's he doing there? I don't know. But it looks interesting. So, that's... Honestly, that's all I really ask for. So, it's a nice card. Reggie Gigas V-Star. It looks like a really, really old painting. Uh, it, it's like an old myth... It, it's like an old myth. Like, this is what people are showing others in history class. Like, long ago, there was a tale told of a titan Pokemon carrying continents on its back. And that's what it's doing. It's dragging this continent across the land. It just looks like the... Yeah, it looks like an illustration based on myth. That's super cool. That is a really, really cool take on Regigigas. I love that a lot. Now I this is one of the one this is one of the few cards that I have seen previously and man 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 bro who C A Nanahara I have never heard of this artist who are they why are they so good can they draw more cards please because this is like the coolest card I've ever freaking seen like I just love how wispy and curly it is because. Hisuian Zoroark is wispy and curly. It's a ghost with a fantastic fluttering mane, but it's a V-Star, so it needs to have a gold aura. There it is. That's just... It, it's just absolutely brilliant. It's so awesome. I love it. I love it so much. Probably the coolest card ever. I mean, I've been saying, that, like, oh, yeah, this card, totally. Best card in the set. I said that several times, but for real, this is just absolutely unreal this is like top chase card along with deoxys v max i super love this adaman so we've got an alternate art of adaman which is cool because this has the other uh diamond clan characters so the other major characters in legends arceus from the diamond clan you've got a rezu who i love and then other characters that are in the game that I totally know the names of, but I like that Ottoman is the one facing the camera in a cool pose. I like it. I like this. I, I like that they gave uh, new arts for the, the for these characters, but with kind of a different take on them. Very cool. Charon's Care. You've got Charon with a normal type Pokemon, Lipard. <laughs> No, actually, I think that's one of the Pokemon he uses, like, in the first game, in Black and White 1. So that's actually a really cool detail. 
Uh, maybe doesn't make too much sense for the card, because the card's talking about colorless Pokemon, which Lightheart is not, but you know what? Whatever. Who cares? I don't. I like the card. It looks nice. Sharon, he's my guy. I appreciate him. Cold Resist Experiment. This is great. I like that you've got Colrus doing research, because that's his thing. He's a researcher. Uh, the full art Colrus' experiment does not show that. It's just Colrus. You know, I always hate it when a card is titled something, but it doesn't show the character. Like, like okay, so the one that I really hate are... Yeah, Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick. And then here's the ult here's the full art of Maxi's Hidden Ball Trick. It's him thinking. Do you see him performing a hidden ball trick anywhere? Because I don't. And also, Archie's ace in the hole. What is Archie's in the ace in the hole? He's just doing a pose. He what what there is no ace in the hole, it's just Archie. So <clears throat> So with Colrus, you know, you've got Colrus's experiment. What is Colrus's experiment in this image? I see Colrus. I don't see his experiment. But in this, you can actually see he is maybe experimenting a little bit. He is doing something interesting. So yeah, he's experimenting. That's what he does. He's also eating a nice Borgar. Because he's just a normal dude. With some very, very weird hair. But I like this a lot. I would definitely take this over the uh, original Colrus's experiment. Cynthia's ambition. Ah! It's the best Cynthia art ever! It's the best! I'm making like the, the crying emoji face going, Oh! It's Cynthia! She's walking in Seno! In like Spear Pillar or wherever. She's on Mount Coronet. She's got her gastrid on. It's so cool. And, you know, I like that they went with Gastrodon. Because we've all seen her Garchomp. And Lucario is another super popular Pokemon she has. How often do we see Cynthia's Gastrodon? Just, just an interesting little detail. A nice little choice there. I love this a lot. And, you know, again, a card that is like a, a, a character's action or whatever. And you actually kind of see it. So, like... Cynthia's ambition was just her... Yeah, okay, so... So Cynthia's ambition is just doing... Is just her doing an Ojo-sama pose. Like, look, I like the art. I'm not necessarily complaining. I just wish I actually knew what Cynthia's ambition really looked like. I know what Cynthia looks like. She looks great. What does her ambition look like? Here you see her in Mount Coronet studying legends. That's her ambition. That's really cool. That says a lot about the character. I appreciate it. Gard Gardenia's Vigor. I, mm, I appreciate what they're going for, but I prefer the older run, I think. Yeah. The, the, the other... The original Gardenia's Vigor was just... That's just such a beautiful illustration. And it does look quite vigorous, if I do say so myself. But that is just such a beautiful illustration. I want this. Um, although, I appreciate what they were going for here. You got Gardenia with a bunch of flowers. Illustrated in this nice style. And she's watering a Bellossom. Because there's a Bellossom in this. Oh, there's a Cherubi. I just now noticed the Cherubi there. That's cool. That's fun. There's probably... Oh, there's a Cherum. There's probably a Roselia here somewhere. I just can't see it right now. I like what they were going for. Um, you know, if I ever play, like, four copies of Gardenia's Vigor, I'll play three of the original one and one of this. But I'm not going to have four copies of Gardenia's Vigor in any deck. Grant! This is cool. Um, I like that the original one has him climbing a mountain. This one has him climbing a tree! Doing something cool and athletic for his, for his fossil Pokemon at the bottom. Because he uses Tyrantrum, or just Tyrant and Amora in the, in the uh, gym battle. That's cool. That's a nice image. I like it. I don't know if I prefer it to the original Grant, but I respect it. So if I ha ever need like two copies of Grant, which I don't know why I would, 
I would use one of both. But I, I, I don't think I ever would, because that's stupid. You only ne ever need one. Irina! Whoa! <laughs> Uh, I love Irina. Um, although, I don't know if I actually like this one more than the original one. Yeah, she's just not uh, illustrated as well. And honestly, honestly, Team Pearl had terrible characters. <laughs> like, all of the characters of this image, except for Irina, are terrible and I don't like them. I want them to get out of the image. Go away! <laughs> just give me Irina. Um, but it's nice. Again, I, I appreciate the, uh, the different take on it. Uh, especially to mirror the Ataman. So, yeah. It's alright. Melanie! There's a new Melanie! And it's a nice card. It says a lot about her character. She's gonna take that Snom and throw it into the hot pot. Or make an omelet like this other snom right here. <laughs> She's making some deep fried snom. Hell yeah. <laughs> this is a great art. I would definitely have this. Index. Raihan. This is like the, the fourth Raihan we've ever had. But it's super cool. He signed the Pokeball. He's such a cool dude. Everyone looks up to him. She She's got the same jacket that he does. I just now noticed that. That's so fun. Oh, that's great. Yeah, they're, they're, he's doing like a meet and greet or something. But she's got the jacket because she's such a fan. That's a lot of fun. This is a great art. Super cool. Um, Roxanne, in this really fun style, like this funny cartoony style, um, she's at the, uh, Restboro Museum. Did Restboro have a museum? I actually can't remember. I mean, the rock, the rock place usually has a museum. Pewter had a museum. Orberg had a museum. I, whatever, doesn't matter. Maybe she's visiting the Orberg Museum, because it, because it's got Bastiodon and, um, uh, that's a Tyrantrum. I was about to say Rampardos. I'm wrong. Let's just move on. Okay, here is where Akira Egawa established himself as the best artist in the Pokemon TCG. Like the the actual number one artist in this in this hobby. It's 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 over for all y'all. It's over. Whoever your favorite artist is, you know, I, I don't know who's your favorite artist. Sakuma, Arita. It doesn't matter. Akira Egawa is sweeping them away. He is the new goat because just look at this, bro. Look at the landscape, the, the fire, the smoke behind it, and then Palkia. So majestic. So detailed. Just so cool. And then Dialga. Same thing. The landscape, the effects, the lava. And then the pose, galloping away. Giratina. This is such a strange angle for Giratina. But man, what in the world is even going on here? Like, I think it, it almost looks like it's like kind of descending from a tree or something. Or maybe this is actually hell. Like, this is the river of sticks flowing beneath it. And these are like, there's like some stuff dangling from the ceiling that it's falling off of. Like, such a crazy angle of Giratina right there. And then Arceus. The gold Arceus. Just, I know that looking at the scans isn't quite doing the images justice. So I really hope maybe one of these days I will be able to get all four of the gold V-Stars in Crown Zenith. But... They absolutely gave the gold V stars to the right guy. Like, like they said, we need to have the Sinnoh slash Hisuian legendary Pokemon all have gold V star cards, and they all need to combine to make one grand, massive, beautiful image. We need to give this super crazy ambitious project to Akira Egawa because that is the guy that's going to get it done for us and they made the right decision like this is what legendary Pokemon are supposed to be like 
This is the god of creation. The god of the underworld and antimatter. The god of space. Uh, sorry, the god of time and the god of space. Like, they, they're all just so ethereal. And just, just so, like, grand looking. Just so majestic. It's just perfect. Like, these four cards at the end of the set are absolutely perfect. And I love them so much. They are some of the most amazing Pokemon cards ever printed. And I just cannot thank Akira Agawa enough for making these cards. I hope I get them someday so I can actually look at them in person. Because everyone that I've ever seen who, like, has one of these, even in Japanese... They're all just like, yeah, they're like the most insane looking cards ever. They're just the absolute best. They're just jaw-droppingly beautiful. Just fantastic. And then we've got... Oh, now we got... No, we're just in Japanese. Uh, but we also got hollow energies, I guess. So that's cool. But, yeah, that's it. That's the end of the set. Uh, if you want to know, like, my favorites, obviously the four gold cards um Cynthia's Ambition Hisuian Zoroark uh V-Star Regigigas V-Star I'm gonna put Deoxys up there uh Leafeon V-Star or sorry Deoxys V-Max cause I forgot that there are two of them um Leafeon V-Star is gonna be on there Mew Art Rare is one of them uh wherever it was uh, what else? Dunsparce Art Rare. I love that. Lunatone Art Rare. Diancy Art Rare. Toxtricity Art Rare. Manaphy Art Rare. Um, yeah, I think those are like my, my top, top favorites. But, you know, I don't think there's a single one of the cards in the Galarian Gallery that I didn't like. Like, even the ones that I wasn't like crazy impressed with, I at least like appreciate. Like, I didn't love this Lapras, but I respect it. I appreciate that it's there. There are none of them where I would say, like, okay, this was, like, a total miss. Like, I don't love the comfy, but it's all right. <coughs> oh, Thievul should be up there as well. Thievul was great. So, yeah. Just an absolutely fantastic set. I cannot wait to get as many of these cards as I can. Um, maybe someday I will try completing the entire set. Um, I say try because I'm not made out of money, but you know what? I will complete it someday or die trying. So I hope you enjoyed taking this adventure with me through the Crown Zenith. And I hope you enjoyed my commentary on the set. I would love to know what your favorite cards of this set are in the comments below. And tell me what you think about this set. Tell me what you think about these cards. And I will see you around. So yeah. Goodbye.